Time Gromit. Another perfect landing. Your turn to make breakfast, Gromit. Eggs, I think. And toast with honey today. Step to it, lad. I'm famished. Honey pipe directly from the source. Everyone in town will want their own honey tap when word gets out. Well, what did the postman bring us then? Any orders? Hand it over, lad. Did you bring the mail, Gromit? Oh, well, oh no, final demand, I will always payment due now, and a disconnection? Nothing but bills, Gromit. I can't look at these before I have my breakfast. If we don't find some steady customers soon, I don't know how we'll make ends meet. Oh, all right then, I'll open one, but just the one? Hmm. Seems your subscription to Marrow Growers Monthly is up for renewal. Don't suppose you'd consider cancelling? Thought not. Oh, better pay up then. Now, where did I put me pen? Ah, yes. That dog is getting a little too independent, if you ask me.
Any news on the breakfast front, Gromit? Cracking eggs, Chuck. But I can't tuck in until I get my toast and honey. Done to a turn. My compliments to the chef. But I can't break my fast without honey. Honey, how sweet of you, Gromit. <laughs> now that's what I call a breakfast feast. Wasn't so difficult, was it, lad? With a hearty plate of eggs and toast under me belt, I'm ready to take on the world. Gromit, I've a strange feeling this is the day our fortunes are going to change. Wallace, may I have a word? Uh, if it's about yesterday's uh, um, little mishap. Oh no, you see. I can assure you it, it was an accident, Mr. Penier, and I'll certainly pay for the damage to your grocery shop. I was just putting the Sniffer 3000 through its paces. It's still only a prototype, you know. Oh, I realize that, Mr. Wallace. And what better place to test out a cheese detector than in a shop with such an excellent selection of cheeses? Happen. But you'll still have to pay for the damage, I'm afraid. Yes, of course. I'll put it all right. Though funds are, how can I put this, a little tight at the moment. Only until our new business is up and running. Aye, well, that's what I'm here to talk about. I understand you and Gromit are in the honey business now. Fresh deliveries daily, from B to you. <laughs> ah, well, perhaps I can help you get on your feet. I'm having my annual sounding of the Crumpets Festival, and I'm clean out of honey. Can you deliver 50 gallons? 50 gallons? By tonight? Tonight? It'll more than cancel your debt, and it'll be good advertising for you. What do you say? I say... I say yes! We're in business, lad! Heads up, no time for slacking. From B to you has landed its first major order. 50 gallons of honey by tomorrow. I want this place to be a hive of activity. It's your chance to show the world what sort of workers you are. They're certainly buzzing with excitement. Or maybe they're hungry. Did you remember to feed them this morning, Gromit? Never mind, lad. I'll do it. Flowers, the perfect meal for a hungry hive. The remote control for my Sniffer 3000. Too bad about the teasing problems. Still, this might come in handy. Ah, there's the hatch from me rocket ship. Remember that moon holiday, Gromit? The magnetronic pollinator is the linchpin of the operation. My workers get their rations mechanically. No foraging in flower beds for them. Uh, Bon Appetit! The oh. hole! Hmm, not exactly a flood, is it? Hmm... 
flowers, Gromit. That's the weak link in our production chain. We need more flowers. Now where can I find a whole lot of flowers in a hurry? So that's where the dog tags went. I'm sure Gromit will be glad to get them back. Mmm, last night's bedtime snack. Gorgonzola makes a nice change from Wensleydale. to see you've emerged from your subterranean lair. of gardening, have you, Miss Flip? Working my green fingers to the bone. But the hard work appears to be paying off. Indeed it does. Blooms everywhere. I call it my purple paradise. It certainly looks delicious. I mean, I imagine it would look delicious if you were an insect. You mean, if I were a bee? Well... Now you mention it. You want to feed my flowers to your bees? That is, if you don't mind. How many would you like? As many as you can spare. Oh, you can have all you want, Mr. Wallace. Oh, much obliged, Miss Flit. Here, you can jolly well grow your own. Uh, right ho. You should have a nice bed of flowers in two or three months. I can't wait two or three months. I've got a deadline. This evening. Oh, you poor simple man. Nothing grows that quickly. I wonder. Rex Armstrong's quick grow muscle formula. Watch them sprout in seconds. Hmm. If it works on people, perhaps I could adapt it to work on flowers. Three miracle ingredients. Grotein, Energize, Strongium. Well, I need a miracle, and fast. It shouldn't be too tricky to knock up a batch myself. Then we'll see who's got the grandest garden in West Wallaby Street. The hive will be humming in no time. Can't take an old soldier by surprise. Morning, Major Crumb. It is, if you don't mind enemy invasions. I beg your pardon? Didn't you get my message? Received intelligence of a major air assault. Expect the sirens to sound any minute. Hope you know where your nearest air raid shelter is. I do recall something about that. But, Major Crumb, are you sure you're not mistaken? I know, I know, I've made predictions before, but I'm not trying wolf. This time, I've got truth. A jar? It's what's inside the jar that counts. Incontrovertible evidence that the enemy is on the move. 
does it? I can only see a snail. Of course it's a snail. But what's she trying to tell us? That's the important thing. Uh, what is she trying to tell us? Look at her, man. She's retreated into her shell in the middle of the day. And that means only one thing. It means she knows trouble is about to strike from the heavens. Law of nature, Wallace. Loaded in France during the war. Never wrong yet. Good man, Wallace. I see you at least appreciate the seriousness of the situation. Now, spread the word. If people don't believe what an old soldier has to say, perhaps they'll listen to the snail. You've come buzzing back, Mr. Wallace. As a bee to a blossom, eh? I realize this may seem a trifle irregular, but Major Crumb insisted I show you this. It's... Uh, it, uh, oh. A snail? In my garden? I'm not sure, to be honest. I wonder where Major Crumb disappeared to. Wallace! Thank heavens you made it to the shelter! I'd given you up for lost! Caught in the crossfire, were you? You're looking at my case, aren't you, Wallace? Well, I suppose I was, Major. Bet you'd like to know what's inside. I am curious, yes. Ha! This case is packed full of government issue protein bars. Protein? Rations, Wallace. Emergency rations for. Emergencies, obviously. Beat stockpiling them since the war. Enough nutrition in them to feed a man under fire for a whole day. And very tasty they look, too. Tasty? They're foul, but packed with high-strength protein. I'd love to try one. Out of the question, I'm afraid. You don't have clearance. And besides, protein bars are only issued in the event of civil emergencies. Orders are orders, Wallace. George, this is an emergency! Private Grubbit! I hereby issue you one groating bar. Guard it well, and see that it lasts you all day. Wallace, here's one for you as well. Much obliged. Ah, Queen, God bless her. Sure, she looked thinner last time I stood to attention during the National Anthem. Careful, Wallace. You're heading into hostile territory. The enemy has clearly landed, and most likely set up camp in West Wallaby Street. Who knows what the blighters have done to our once peaceful neighborhood? If you make it back alive, you'll have to give us a full report. In the meantime, eat your protein rations. The protein will keep your strength up, especially if you're captured. Brave lad! We'll keep the home fires burning. You see, Private Grummet, I told you he'd make it back to us alive. Our Wallace is a fighter. Bagged a few of those blighters, did you? You've got to get 
get your mind off the carnage up there. Would you like to hear one of my old war stories? Mm, I'd help pass the time. Well, I hate to... Uh... Ah, of course you would. I brought visual aids. I can still see it perfectly after all these years. <coughs> what a face. That's me kitted out for heavy combat. That helmet took many a dent before the war was through. Without it, I could have become seriously loopy. Take my advice, Wallace. Never go into battle without a regulation helmet like the one in this picture. I can still see it perfectly. After all the... <clears throat> Who's that fellow? That's me as a young recruit. Off to basic training. How I cried when they cut off my golden curls. But I cheered up as soon as they issued me with a beautiful set of dog tags. Dashed useful dog tags. If you happen to forget your rank or name, you've got it right there. Never go into battle without your dog tags, Wallace. I can... Uh, uh, now there's a sight. That's me posing with mother next to my 40 millimeter bofers. Look at the size of that monster. Big Betty, we called her. <laughs> the gun, not the mother. Sounds like you were quite a soldier, Major Crumb. Well, Wallace, why the past tense? Uh, uh, oh dear. Once a soldier, always a soldier. Something you civilians will never grasp. And I'd be happy to prove it by charging into the fray. That is, if I were recommissioned and had a proper helmet with a cute little brim, and if I could find someone to take charge of this shelter and distribute the protein bars. Gromit could do the job. Private Gromit? Can I entrust my precious cache of Grotein bars to a Pongo? Perhaps so. He's proven himself a trusty foot soldier. Yes. If I am called away to the front, I'd feel comfortable leaving Private Gromit in charge. But I haven't been recommissioned. I thought you might find this useful, Major Crumb. A helmet! By George Wallace, there's nothing like a good helmet. Makes a fellow want to put himself in the path of projectiles. If you know what I mean. But I haven't been recommissioned. I found these in the hall, Major Crumb. Dog tags! I've been recommissioned! Bound to heaven, of course. Can't leave good military material sitting on the shelf. My place is in the trenches. Good heavens! I shouldn't be skulking around in a cellar like a frightened rat. I'm a soldier by thunder! Private Gromit, I hereby appoint you officer commanding this air raid shelter. Here, you pass out the rations. I've got a war to win. Request dispensation of grotein bars, uh, soldier. Cold toast. Shame to let it go to waste. A nice cup of strongium tea ought to spark up the old grey matter. Hey, bring that back, you thieving rascal! Hold on a minute. Strongium. That's one of the ingredients in Rex Armstrong's Quick Grow Muscle Formula. I need that tea bag! Come back here, you thieving rascal. That's my tea bag. 
I won't have you threatening that dear little creature. Not while he's in my garden. You're persistent in your attentions this morning, Mr. Wallace. Have you noticed? I put a new roof on Mr. Nutter's house. Mr. Nutter? Surely you're acquainted with our neighbor, Mr. Nutter, the squirrel. Uh, I'm not on first name terms with any of the neighborhood animals, I'm afraid. What about Gromit? Oh, no, he isn't either. Here you are, little fella. Try some toast. Yes, do feed him. I'm sure the little mite's hungry. What are you looking for, exactly? Back again, Mr. Wallace? I'm flattered. Ah, Mr. Wallace! That looks like... Can it really be... Cheese? Indeed it is, Wallace. Wensleydale, your favourite. And... Am I to take it that these are... Yes, three samples. Go on, duck in. Don't mind if I do, Mr. Paneer. One for now. And one for later. Don't forget, Mr. Wallace. Fifty gallons by sunset. Hey up, Wallace, love. How's business? So, Wallace, in the honey business now, I hear. Oh, you've heard the buzz, have you? <laughs> oh, oh, indeed I have. It's all over town. That'll never get off the ground. Stupid idea, if you ask me. And nobody did. Couldn't get honey out of a honey jar, that one. Excuse my husband. He's a right misery gut sometimes. Those be... Uh, I couldn't help but notice the flowers on your window ledge, Mrs. Gabberly. Aye, lovely, aren't they? Bring a touch of summer to the town square. Especially the purple pansies. Always been partial to pansies, me. You should see the flat. It's full of them. They're blinking weeds, if you ask me. Can't abide them. Oh, go and suck a lemon, you moaning ninny. Ah! Oh, now look what you've done, you clumsy oaf. And open up that window when I'm yelling at you. All right. <laughs> but only to prove your insults don't get to me anymore. <laughs> I can deflect them all. Is that so? I'd be happy to take these flowers off your hands, Mrs. Gabberly. That is, if they make your husband unhappy. That's a good reason to keep them to my way of thinking. But go ahead if you want them. Much obliged. Pardon me, Mrs. Gabberly. I wonder, uh, that is, could you spare a... Verb. Uh, sorry? Give me a verb, Wallace. An action word. Oh, uh, playing a word game, are we? In a manner of speaking. Oh, well, let's see. A verb. How about the verb to stew? Ooh, I like that. That's a good one. Now I need a thing. A thing? Aye, you know, something physical you could touch. Something I can touch. Blimp. Why not? Now a descriptive word, if you please. Hmm. Uh, mild? No. Oh, oh, oh that's a corker, that is. <laughs> Last one. Nearly done. I need another thing. Or, like a person or animal. A person or animal. Hmm, now, let me see now. Gentlemen? Yes, that's a thing. Hey! What is 
it now! Oh, stew! A blimp, you mild gentleman! Hey! You do know how to wound a bloke, Winnie! him that time. Serves him right for being such a grumpy old granddad. Would you mind, uh, if I, uh, that is, could you see your way fit to lending me that pot of pansies, Mrs. Gabberly, uh, for business purposes? Business purposes? Well, be my guest. I've got bunches of them. Oh, there's Miss Sniffer 3000, banged up like a common criminal. Oh, breaks my heart. That cheese detector's not a bad machine, just a bit over keen. It's all the energites in its system. Energites? It seems to me, yes. Energites is one of the ingredients in Rex Armstrong's quick grow muscle formula. I used my last Energite battery to fuel the sniffer. I'll have to get it back if I want to finish the formula. I, I, I noticed you received my petition for early release of the Sniffer 3000, Constable Dibbins. Yes, and I notice it's attracted the signatures of just one man and his dog. We're only appealing for natural justice. But your blinking cheese detector thingamy, what do you call it, destroyed an entire grocery store. Uh, teething problems. It's still only a prototype. A prototype? It's a villain, if you ask me. A diabolical device. You can see that in its face. My machine isn't evil, Constable Gibbons. It's just got a short fuse and a few loose nuts. Hmm, we'll see. I'm going to formally interview this glorified tin and if it can convince me that it's not a menace to society, then perhaps I'll release it into your custody. You there, prisoner. Kindly look at me when I'm talking to you. Oi, where do you think you're going? Cheeky blighter. We've had our little chat. And? I'm afraid there's no talking to your sniffer. Hardwired for criminality, I'd say. Must be awfully hot under that helmet, I reckon. A sunny day like today. It's a trifle sweltering, yes. But danger and discomfort are all in the line of duty for an officer of the law. Though most folk don't appreciate it. Can you see fit to grant my appeal, Constable Dibbins? Not on your Nelly. That heap of nuts and bolts is now but trouble. Couldn't give me a single straight answer when I tried to interrogate it. It only responds to certain commands. I know, I programmed it. Perhaps you could try a gentler approach? Well, I'll have another chat with it. More friendly like. Oh, yes. Oh, much obliged, Constable Dibbins. I ain't promising nothing, mind. Time we had a little chat. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Ah. 
that's more like it. Now you've had time to think, what can you tell me about what happened yesterday? Feel bad about what you did, do you? He's weeping. Maybe this contraption's got feelings after all. Now, I want a truthful answer. If I release you from custody, will you do it again? Well, I'll be done. The prisoner has been interviewed. Yes. And having exhibited signs of repentance, I am prepared to release you into your protective custody. Provided, Wallace, you give me an assurance that you'll keep your blinking eye on him. Or it. Or whatever he answers to. Oh, I'll keep an eye on him, Constable Dibbins. You have my word on that. Miss Flint, if you'll just take a look at the pansies, I think you'll... I told you, Mr. Wallace. I refuse to let those yellow hooligans have the satisfaction of... Oh, Paul, you see? They're mending their ways. They just needed a firm talking to, that's all. Mother forgives you, you naughty little pansies. Sweet satisfaction. Action, Mr. Wallace. Yes, indeed. Very sweet. One generous chunk of protein to give it texture. One unit of energized fluid for a creamy finish. One dose of strongium into the mix. <laughs> now to mix up my very own quick grow muscle formula. That ought to do it. No, the mixomatics all mixed up. Stop! Oh! Help! Drum it! Oh, thanks, lad. Checking to see if anything's sprouted yet, Mr. Wallace. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, Miss Flit. Really? I don't see what you're hoping to... Oh! I don't believe it! It works! It works! The homemade quick grow miracle muscle formula works! We're in business now! You see, Gromit, look where a bit of enterprise can get you. If I hadn't found that flyer you chucked in the bin, I'd never have been able to concoct my miracle grow formula. And then where would we be? You really must be careful what you chuck out. You know? Uh, Lincoln, Nora! Oh, my word! I think I'm going to faint. This ought to be plenty of fuel for the old pollinator. Thank you. 
Cats champion, that is. 50 gallons of honey and just in time for my annual tea and crumpet festival. Pleasure doing business with you, Wallace. Always aim to please, our bees. That's the last of our bills, Gromit, and we've got just about enough left over for that little holiday we've been planning. This year, I fancy... Blackpool. Oh, oh yes, lad. I think our money troubles are over at last. Air raid! Air raid! Battle oh, stations dear. everywhere! Not this again. Excellent vantage point. Prepare for a crash landing, you devils! Sorry, Wallace, but I'm going to have to come near your dining room. Uh, now, just a minute, Major Crow. No time to argue, old man. The whole town's under bombardment. But here they come! What's an egg from it? Giant bees! Heaven help the good citizens of West Wallaby Street! Civilians, out! But... That's an order, Wallace! Private Gromit, kindly escort this civilian from the battle zone! Keep the faith, soldier! West Wallaby Street needs you! Good heavens, Gromit! You don't suppose those monsters have anything to do with our honey-making operation, do you? Bumbling egg! My quick-grow formula. It didn't just affect the flowers. Just hope it's a wrong number and not more bad news. Uh, yes, Mr. Paneer. Uh, well, of course you're upset. Being dive-bombed by giant bees isn't good for any business. That we're doing all we can to get the situation under control. Uh, normal honey service will be resumed as soon as possible. Uh, with normal sized bees. That's a promise. There's a giant fly in the soup, lad. And it's shaped like a bee. They're taking over the town. Time to read the riot act. I am their employer after all. They won't listen. They're completely out of control. This funny business has a sting in the tail and no mistake. Oh! Do something for me! Hello, from B to... Oh! Constable Dibbins. Well, well after all, it wasn't innocent. Ah, Mr. Gabble here. I ain't what you're gonna teach your humble pie. Bunch, I spoke out a turn yesterday. You're not a daft apers after all. What I said to you, I'll take it all back. You're a credit to the town. Just a minute. What's this? Ah! Giant bigot maze! Oh my kitty heart! There's only one nick of boot round here. What could have caused this? Careful with the auto flip frying pan, lad. The timer mechanism is very delicate. It's liable to spring at odd moments. Uh, I see. But, but the good news is. Oh.
to me. Nice doggy woggy. I'm trapped in this tree by giant bees. Do you understand? You must take a message to your master. I need him to get me down from here. Can you tell him that? Oh, uh, wait a minute. Give him this. It's looking grim out there. That's right, soldier. Help steady my aim. Into the dustbin of history for you, my friend. Got him! Oh, then got away! Hey! Got him! Back in the air! Blast it! Oh, then got away! Teach him a thrilling sight for you, Private Gromit. Why, I feel like a young man again. Calls for a celebration, Private. Meet you in the mess in twenty. Hello, 
Oh, Chuck, you're not about to let a few hooligan bees keep you from your business. Ah, Mr. Gabble here. I ain't much good at eating humble pie, but I spoke out a turn yesterday. You're not a daft apers after all. What I said to you, I'll take it all back. You're a credit to the town. Well, biting dogs come limping home. There now, weren't so hard, were it? Is that you, Winnie? Breaking code of silence, are you? No need for silence, now you've shown a bit of humility. Humility? Me? Never! Oh, you don't fool me. You're just a big old softy, and I know it. Hey, I need me head examined, keeping shop open when town's crawling with giant bees. What's got into you, Winnie? Stay back, I say. Oh, Winnie Gabble. Sorry for the delay, Mr. Paneer. I think you'll find the streets are now be free. Thank heavens for the boys in blue. Now, I'll have to ask you to accompany me to the station. There's some paperwork we need to fill out. Nothing too bothersome. Happy to do my part. It's citizens like you what make my job a pleasure, Mr. Paneer. Off with you now. Very busy at the moment. Haven't time for inquisitive dogs. Oh. And tell that master of yours he left Summit behind. Constable Dibbins. Well, yes, like I said, he's very well trained. Right then. Goodbye, Constable. Good work, lad. Seems you took care of the downtown gang good and proper. But so long as they're still supersized, our job's only half done. I'd better get to work on a reverse growth formula.
pacified all the bees, Gromit. Good lad. I knew I could count on you. Help! Wallace! Someone! That sounds like Miss Flit. Panic! I'm coming, Miss Flit! Oh, it seems I'm underdressed. Gracious! Hang on, Miss Flit! Ah! <laughs> nice to So that's the story, Miss Flit. I'm afraid my miracle growth formula led to some uh, supersized problems. I hope you're going to get rid of the infernal stuff. Oh, I am. And rest assured, all the bees have been dealt with safely and humanely. Well, that's a relief. But weren't you scared, facing down an angry swarm of giant bees all by yourself? Frightened? Oh, well, I, uh... Well, I was heavily outnumbered, of course, but uh, they soon saw who was boss and that the uh, sting was on the other foot. I was terrified. That's only natural, Miss Flit. Uh, uh, well, I had a twinge or two myself at times, you know, but keep a cool head. That's my motto. Look your adversary square in the eye and never let yourself get carried away. After I've built her a hive in sonic brass and a magnetronic pollinator thingamajig to take all the hard work out of honey making. Oh, I'm beginning to think I should never have mixed this growth formula at all. I ought to chuck it away. Hey, easy old girl. No need to get excited. Put me down gently and no one will get hurt. Oh dear. Nothing in the beekeeper's manual about aerial abduction. Help! Help! Grommy! That's a boy! I knew you'd come through! Raise the ladder, lad! and I left the spare at home. Gromit? Gromit? Gromit! You all right, lad? Oh, good show! We've made it through this little episode in one piece. More than I can say for the autopilot, I'm afraid. Oh, the autopilot! Oh dear, 
Looks like our troubles aren't quite over. Look out behind you, Gromit! Keep her at bay. I'll try and lose her in here. Hmm. Perhaps the honey could use a little kick. Small uh, um, complication.
Something! Call the Coast Guard! Talk about raining cats and dogs, our plumbing's in a right pickle. Fetch me my spanner, lad, while I stick me finger in the dike. the job. Bring it here now, will you, lad? Well done. Our troubles are over. Whoops. Crikey. That was a shock. Best trip the circuit breaker, lad. And stay clear of the water. It's electric! Look out, lad! The tide's coming in! Best find another way to the circuit breaker! Tommy, have you gone, Crackers? You'll get yourself electrocuted! Careful, lad! That's extremely volatile compressed rocket gas! Ex-NASA! Now we're in a pickle and no mistake. Don't do it, lad. You'll blow yourself to smithereens. Lincoln, Nora. Well done, Grommy. Poor be fixed in a jiffy. Just a moment. Turn to the right. And now it's safe to hit the lights. That's better. Oh, there you are. Well, we'd best clean up. Crack on, lad. There's a lot to do. Sorry about the unseasonal weather. I'm afraid it means we'll have to put off our little trip to the seaside. Unless... we bring the seaside to us. Look here. We've already got a cellar full of water. Just a few more items. There we are. And we can enjoy the seaside from the comfort of our own home. Ho ho ho! Won't that be something, lad? We'll stay home for the holidays and have our own beach to boot. Lucky the rain's let up for now. I'll be back in a trice with all the necessaries. Sun, sand and beach umbrella coming up. doing here? Picking you up, lassie. With a date. Surely you're not still thinking of the beach. It's freezing cold and might rain any moment. Ach, a little wet never dampened the spirits of my biscuit. Grab your wellies and we'll be off. Duncan, I really don't think so. You must admit, it's hardly beach weather, is it? It's perfect beach weather. Nothing like a wee nip in the air to keep you sharp. Well, the same won't do. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, hello there, Wallace. Come and meet Duncan McBiscuit. He's an old friend. Uh -huh. And of course you know my two precious darlings, Poojie Woo and Tinky Wee. 
Say hello to Mr. Wallace, Angels. Uh, yes. Uh, look, Gromit. It's your friends from next door. Cute little fellows. Oh, yes. They're show dogs, you know. Prize winners. They're my pride and joy. Well, I won't keep you. No, 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 no. Duncan was just leaving. Leaving with you, lassie? For a day on the beach? But what if there's a cloudburst? I don't consider thunder and lightning very pleasant beach companions. But there's no thunder and no lightning. Can you hear any thundering? Any cracking or booming? Well, can you? Maybe I can. Just hush your tongue a moment, will you? We must act now before the flood. Gather the townsfolk. We'll stack the sandbags to the north, south, and east. Still time if we hurry. Look lively now, soldier. No, 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 you can't dump these sandbags here. Just, just, just wait a moment, Major, please. Stop dithering, you dunderhead. The town's being swept under. There's now being swept under, Major. And you're beginning to be a public nuisance. Uh, um. Yes, soldier? Out with it. Uh, well, uh, if you'd like to unload these sandbags, I know just the spot. Just as I told you. The people are pleading for sand, and we've got to give it to them. I'd like to give it to you, you loony old goat. But if you've got a need for sandbags, Wallace, I hereby grant you permission. Oh? You grant permission? Indeed. Take all you want, Wallace. Infernal cheek. I'm the commanding officer here, you jumped up Jobsworth, and I hereby revoke permission. Can't you be cooperative just this once, Major? Cooperative? Don't know the meaning of the word. Sounds subversive to me. All right, Major, how about this? Why don't we ask Wallace here who's in command? This young Pongo? Very well. Why not? Tell us, soldier, who holds rank here? Remember your training. Two fine flavors that work well together. We're talking about who's in charge, not flavors. Just a moment. Are you saying that instead of bickering over who's in charge, we should be working together as a team, like uh, steak and kidney? Uh, are you saying that in a crisis like this, we must act as one, like a well-trained commando unit? Actually, it's a sign... Exactly, a sign that we can now rise above our squabbles. Very well, then. Uh, here's what we'll do. We'll send these sandbags off with you. Thank goodness. Well, I'll be off, then. I can hear an hot meat pie calling me name, yes I can. Ernest Dibbins, it's saying. It's tea time. Fetch the blinking ketchup, Ernest. Now then, soldier, all I need is your requisition form. Requisition form? That's right. Got to play by the book. Can't let the spies sabotage operations, can we? Spies? Surely you've heard about the spies from abroad. They're everywhere. Don't look so rattled, man. Just bring me your requisition form, and you'll soon be neck deep in splendid sandbags. Oh, right then. Afternoon, Wallace. That's quite a light, Mr. Paneer. It's a searchlight. I say, no shortage of candle power there. Right as the sun, don't you think? Wonderful for bringing in the big spenders. When the weather's fair, that is. I wonder, Mr. Paneer, where might a person acquire such a light? I'd be happy to lend you this one, but if the weather warms up tonight, I'll need it to advertise my super sore away sizzling summer sale. Oh. Oh, yeah. It's a stack of Stilton. Oh. 
Oh, was that the earth-shaking roar of thunder? Uh, well, actually, uh... It doesn't matter when it comes to the complex question of climate. A person should never really rely on his own senses. Only the experts really understand the weather. Oh? What's the latest cheese of the week, I wonder? Stilton! And that reminds me, I just sent the truck out with your delivery. When you return home, you'll find it waiting patiently on your doorstep. Ah, just like Gromit. You know, Mr. Wallace, there's nothing like coming home to a faithful, loyal cheese. I quite agree. Hello, love. Afternoon, Mrs. Cavalli. Hello, Wallace. Lovely weather, isn't it? Well, uh, I, uh... I'm joking, Pat. I know it's rotten. Had to cancel me holiday. That's a shame. Certainly is being stuck with old misery guts here. I heard that! He don't miss a word I say, except when I ask him to do summit. Ah, sitting behind a till all day ain't exactly hard labour. What would you know about hard labour? I could run this place a sight better than you, if I had a mind to. If you had a mind? What will it be, love? Looking for something to read? Take your pick. I'll put it on your slate. More rotten weather on the way tonight, they say. All set. Hey, make sure he don't nick any sweets. Mind your own business. That old misery guts thinks he could run this shop. He couldn't run a bath. Stormy weather ahead, I'm afraid. Oh? Oh no. After all that, my sizzling summer sail is ruined. I go on holiday, but the weather's a washout. Will the sun never shine on yours truly? I say, I wonder where a person might acquire such a light. You're welcome to borrow this one, Mr. Wallace. There won't be any sizzling summer sail tonight. Not in this blinking weather. That's very kind of you. Always happy to help. Oh, oh, oh. this light'll make a smashing sun. A special order for 62 West Wallaby Street. Stilton. One of my favorites. <clears throat> you wouldn't go to the seaside today, would you, Wallace? You'd stay inside with a cozy cup of tea, inventing some clever thing, wouldn't you? It's certainly cozier indoors. Just so. Now. Duncan, it's time you were on your way. On my way? Felicity! I refuse to go out in a thunderstorm. Och, there's no thunderstorm. You can't hear no thundering, can you? Maybe I can hear thundering. Just button your backpipes for a moment, will you? Oh, yeah, it's mouth-watering. Oh, my gracious! That's thunder, all right. And it's nearly upon us. Oh, for sure it may be thundering, but... But did you see lightning? There's no lightning to bother about us, sir. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not going to stay out here with you waiting to be struck by lightning. I'm going to seek shelter, and if you've any sense at all, Duncan McBiscuit, you'll do the same. Good day. What? Oh. What are you looking at, Jimmy? I'll just borrow this. Just the thing for our cellar-based indoor beach experience.
It's only for cheese, but... Give that here! Good heavens! Special orders? Deliver to 62 West Wallaby Street. You've done the service proud, soldier. Now stand clear. No time for chitter-chatter. I'm needed in West Wallaby Street. Uh, I guess so. Nice to see you, Wallace. Daisy, there we go. Top hole, all the sand we need. The Riviera, here we come. Great news, Gromit. All the goods have been gathered. Now it's time for some elbow grease, eh? To the cellar. Job done, Gromit. Time to relax on the beach, eh? We deserve a holiday. Just a minute. Such a lovely beach. It's a shame to keep it to ourselves when we could... ...share it with paying customers. Just imagine. West Wallaby Street Water World. A genuine beach house, complete with its own all-weather seaside-in-the-cellar basement beach attraction. Oh, oh, we'll be surrounded by happy holiday makers. It'll be grand, Gromit. Honestly, Stayed what a waste of time. Don't this man's ruining my blinking oh, holiday. Oh, Half a mind to take ah, my book and say it go home. Sandwich. I was only teasing. Just ask that great big pudding Shut there. Up. I ain't no pudding, yet. These dogs are disturbing the peace. Bylaws state that all livestock must be kept under proper control in public places. And they're not livestock. I want a refund. I want a refund and all. Refunds would indeed appear to be in order, Mr. Wallace. What do you say? Uh, uh, um, well, here at West Wallaby Street Waterworld, Customer satisfaction is our top priority. If you'll just be patient, I promise we'll have everything under control by supper time. Uh... You've got till supper time, no later. Not much of an holiday so far, I'm sorry to say. Mm, those mutts are a threat to public safety. Shop and never just for that man. Fruit Calling my dears livestock. We can't afford to give refunds, Gromit. We've spent all our money doing the house up. This could be a financial disaster. What are we going to do, lad? I never thought we'd have a house full of unhappy holiday makers. Bunch of morning minis, if you ask me. I'm having a grand old time. Well, that's one satisfied customer, anyway. There we are. This customer relationship management isn't so hard, is it, Gromit? There's hope for our little venture yet. You'd best get supper started. Make it a feast to remember. I'll see to our guests. We'll soon have a house full of happy campers, eh, lad? Hard at work, eh, Gromit? That's what I like to see. We'll soon have a house full of happy holiday makers, never fear. Oh, cracking idea, lad. Everyone loves a copper. You'd best attend to your pots and pans, eh? May I offer you a spot of tea, Major? Of course. Sharpens the wits.
care for some tea, Mr. Paneer? No, thank you, Wallace. I'm too busy for tea. Hello, Wallace. Uh, may I offer you some tea? Oh, you're sweet as honey, but no tea for me, thank you. It makes me windy. Anything I can do for you, Mrs. Gabberly? Oh, dear. Oh, what a mess I am! But it's me own fault for letting that mangy McBiscuit get under me skin. Why should I care what he says? As me mum taught me, sticks and stones will break your bones, but silly names can never hurt you. Hey, here comes trouble! A big fat pudding! <laughs> big fat pudding? Oh, oh, it's true enough, I know it. I'm out of shape for a beach holiday. Perhaps I should just get my refund and go home. Oh, no. That's kind of you, but it's no good. I can't be talked out of a mood like this, can I? Oh, well, I... Uh... Hey, you're in a right mess you are, Winnie Gabberly, and no mistake. What to do? What to do? Not help. There's nothing like a cup of tea. Aye, that's right. A strong cup of cures most ills. Oh. You're a reet good listener, you are, Wallace. He happen I may be knocking on. Too old for a beach holiday, that's for sure. Fresh as a daisy. Oh, I don't know about that. But it's ever so kind of you to say so. Glad you're here, Wallace. I should count me blessings. At least me new outfits. That's something, isn't it? It's a sign. You think so? A sign of things to come. New things that fit. You know what? Winnie Gabberly's had enough of feeling sorry for herself. So what if I'm a bit like a pudding? I've tangled with giant bees, I have. I can take care of a bullying McBiscuit any day. Thank you, Wallace. You've a right kindly way with words, you have. Uh, glad to be of service. I'll be fine now, Pat. Reckon I'll finish my story. Hey! Hey there, you big fat! Shut your trap, you tart and tear away, or I'll box your ears! I do like a good book. No need for a refund, then? Oh, no. I'm as happy as Larry me. Oh, another happy camper. Home sweet home, for as many customers as we can handle. Gangway, cannonball coming through! Ah, uh, Mr. McBiscuit, may I uh, have a word? Oh! Uh, later then. Crikey, the infrastructure's getting a lot of wear and tear. 
trouble springs eternal, it seems. Very fashionable. Safety first. I'd like a word with you, if you please. Oh, I say, Gromit never reacts like that. Watch your fingers. They don't like anyone touching the toy. Enjoying your stay at West Wallaby Street, Waterworld, Constable? I'm this close to having your establishment shut down. Shut down? You heard me. These dogs are a public nuisance and an health hazard and all. Oh dear. Went bonkers, they did. And all because I tried to clear away that horrible little toy of theirs. I don't approve of litter, you know. I believe Miss Flitter... I've warned Felicity Flitter, no. And now she must face the full force of the law. I'm issuing a formal caution for the disruption of lawful quietude. It's the third I've had to write today. The third? Aye, the first two got eaten. Give this one to Miss Flit and tell her to remove her animals or I'll be forced to shut the place down. Gromit won't mind if I borrow this. This needs ironing, it does. Photogenic, if I say so myself. She's scot free now. Big fella. Mm. Ooh, that seems to be in working order. Everything at West Wallaby Street Waterworld is to your satisfaction, Miss Flit. We strive to satisfy. It's sweet of you to ask, Mr. Wallace. I'm having a wonderful time. All this drama swirling around me. But I remain an oasis of calm in the hurly burly of holiday madness. Oh, glad to hear it. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Wallace, I've been longing for a new look, and I quite fancy this one. Very incognito, don't you think? My own babies wouldn't recognise me in this get-up. 
Uh, I'm afraid fashion isn't really my forte, Miss Flip. Nonsense. What man is immune to the allure of a well-dressed woman? Would you like these sunglasses? Oh, wonderful, Mr. Wallace. Very stylish. I'll use these for my new look. It's going to be such fun. I have the glasses. I just need the scarf. Any interest in this? Oh, thank you, Mr. Wallace. What a lovely scarf. Actually, it's a... Uh... Such vibrant colour and such a pretty pattern. It's perfect for my new look. My new look is complete. Just a moment. You're in for a surprise. Ta-da! What do you think, Wallace? Am I not mysterious? Uh, quite mysterious, yes. <gasps> oh, where's Felicity? Where did Miss Flint go? Uh... Here I am! <laughs> we do have fun, Wallace, don't we? Constable Dibbins has requested... Constable Dibbins is mistaken. Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee would never misbehave. They did seem a touch rambunctious. Oh, very well. Let's get this over with. Threatening behaviour towards an officer of the law, that's a serious offence, that is. Don't think I won't lock you up, cos I will. This is your final, final warning. Mochi Woo! Take it away! How could you behave like this? Mummy is very disappointed. Very, very disappointed. And what did you do to upset my precious cupcakes like that? Cupcakes? My darlings, did the bad man upset you? Don't be scared. Mummy's here now. How about a little dressing up game to make it all better? Do you want to play dress up? Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Oh, come along, my sweets. <sighs> She's lucky I didn't throw those mutts in the kennels. Now, with this glow, sour, you can only push PC Ernest Dibbins so far. I hope your holiday is proceeding in a satisfactory manner, Constable. Satisfactory? Hmm. Yes. Yes, indeed. Everything appears to be quite satisfactory, peaceful and in order. Thank you, Wallace. Champion, we're getting there. Camera loves her, and she loves it back. Enjoying your holiday, I hope, Major? Oh, yes, absolutely. Dashed comfortable billet you have here. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, we strive to achieve complete customer satisfaction. That wasn't so hard. Put that thing down and pay attention. Oh. I am about to reenact one of the greatest desert battles of history, the Siege of Akaba. Not many know the tale. It was late 1914, or was it 1916? It was an even year of that, I'm sure. On the one side was a single British soldier, T.E. Lawrence, better known to you civvies as Sir Lawrence of Olivier. On the other, the invading army of the Ottoman Empire, thousands strong. You know the story. 
Lawrence single-handedly defended a desert fortress from a massive attack. He had only one rifle and no ammunition. He was all alone, just like this. Lawrence watched the enemy from a secret vantage point sheltered by enormous red boulders. <laughs> anyway, as the enemy massed, vultures began to circle overhead, crying out in their desperate thirst for blood. <laughs> anyway, now at this point your average Joe would have thrown in the towel and anything else he had to hand. But what do you think our Lawrence did? He took tea, just like this. Lawrence was about to dunk his digestive when suddenly... Oh, blast and bother. This isn't right. Not quite historically accurate, I'm afraid. I'll have to start again. Just a moment. Any interest in this? Perfect! Just like the great boulders of the Akbar Desert! In luck, my boy! I was just about to reenact the Siege of Akbar. Do you know the story? Sir Lawrence took cover under massive red boulders. Just like this. Vultures circled the sky, crying out for blood. Just like this, our Lawrence, cool as a cabbage, took tea. <laughs> just like this. Lawrence was taking tea and about to dunk his digestive when suddenly 10,000 howling Ottoman soldiers charged the fortress. Tea was ruined, obviously. But did Lawrence of Olivier give up? Never! He took his rifle and levered the great red boulders down the dunes, rolling them straight into the enemy horde. With the invaders in disarray, Lawrence, armed only with his bayonet, and still desperate to recover, counterattacked. He took them on one by one until he achieved total and complete victory. I'll just tidy this up. Your searchlight is just what West Wallaby Street Waterworld needed, Mr. Paneer. Everything satisfactory, I hope? No, not satisfactory at all. A certain Scottish gentleman has been deconstructing my constructions. Perhaps the management could have a word with him. I'm afraid Mr. McBiscuit is rather difficult to pin down. You've got to do something. If I can't finish my sandcastle, I'll have to insist on a refund. Your castle looks very handsome, Mr. Paneer. Such charming little bucket shapes. I do admire creative artists like yourself. Oh, thank you, Miss Flit. At least someone appreciates art and craft. Look, it's almost done. What do you reckon? Uh, very nice. That's the Tower of Groceries, where the heroic young shopkeeper sells top-quality produce. Impressive architecture, don't you think? Oh, uh, yes. Hey, this little fella might enhance your sandcastle. A knight to defend the castle, eh? Why not? It couldn't hurt. I should look in on our other guests. But I'm nearly done. Just one last touch. There. The perfect finishing touch. The mark of finest quality produce. Ye. Miss Flit's going to be impressed. Oh, hi. She'll be ever so impressed, I'm sure. Oh, no. Uh, oh, my boot. My poor tender boot. It was a blasted sand trap. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Well, then. 
should be able to work in peace now, I reckon. Oh, well, jolly good. Now for the finishing touch. The defender of the kingdom. However do you manage such lovely creations, Mr. Paneer? It's a knack, Miss Flit. If I hadn't made it into grocer school, I might have been an engineer. But of course, groceries are my first love. Ah, uh, anything else I can assist with? No, thank you, Mr. Wallace. You may consider me a happy camper and most satisfied customer. We do aim to please. Ha-ha! At last! A house full of satisfied customers, just as I predicted. I'd best tell Gromit to lay the table. I must compliment our host. I've had a cracking holiday. Ooh, thank goodness for that. It was a near thing though, wasn't it? Ooh, smell those fish and chips. We can look mm. forward to superior chow here in the offices, may as well. Mm. The tableware doesn't seem to be in breach of any health and safety regulations. Enforcement's the key, of course. You smell like heaven, lassie. Did you buy a new perfume for our date? Oh, really, Duncan? That's just the flower in my hair. And I'm not sure I'd call it a date. Um, uh, before we tuck in, on behalf of the management, that is, Gromit and me, I'd like to welcome you all to our new venture. West Wallaby Street Water World, the only holiday destination with its own all-weather seaside in the cellar, basement, uh, beach attraction. I have a few words to say myself. Raise your glasses. Raise them, I said. To a great day with a great lass, the sweetest sights I ever smelled. That's right, I'm talking about... Hey! Who turned out the... Ah! What's all this? Who's there? Over! Take my last breath. You found me just in time. I've located the victim. Mr. McBiscuit has sustained a nasty knock to the noggin and don't remember now about it. Happily, he will recover. However, aggravated thumping is a serious offence, and I've no choice but to treat every one of you as suspects. Outrageous! <gasps> but I never suspects. <laughs> Until our thumper is caught, nobody leaves this house. Nobody comes in, and nobody goes out. Not till I know the person who done it. I know who did it. Spies from abroad. Saboteurs from the South Sea. Thank you, Major. That's enough of your doolally chatter for now. Only cold, hard facts can solve this mystery. Solve this mystery? That's right. Buy the book. You know, uh, Burden of Innocence and uh, Proof of Purchase and all that. That's our real investigations. Now, what's that contraption? My latest prototype, Constable. The Deductomatic Mystery Solver. 
Dramatic? Is that what's been taking money out of my savings account? Oh no, Mrs. Gabberly. The deductomatic harnesses unused brain power to solve mysteries. If you're pointing the finger, Wallace, any accusation must be backed up by hard fact and proven according to the law. Well, I... Uh, that is, it should be working. Aha! Uh -huh, I've got it! Right then! Tell us, Wallace, who thumped Duncan McBiscuit? Who done it? Who done it? Oh, that can't be right. We're waiting. Uh, 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 just a moment. Any idea who done it, lad? You wouldn't mind pointing him out, would you? was Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee. <laughs> Two wee pups laying junk and low. That's daft, that is. Aye, <laughs> silly that. The very idea of accusing my dear doggies. How absurd. Aye, quite absurd. Absurd, eh? Nothing is absurd before the law. Here we go. It is the absurd claims the law takes most seriously. For, if the absurd cannot expect justice and a fair hearing, then who among us can? He's got a point. We must treat this accusation according to the law. The law requires proof. Proof requires... Uh... Hold on. Proof requires three things. First, the motive. Why did the suspect thump Duncan McBiscuit? Second, the weapon. What was he thump with? Third, a witness. Who can collaborate? C -c -c corroborate said. Uh, back up your accusation. Do you have a motive, a weapon, and a witness, Mr. Wallace? Uh, I'll just recalibrate the inference ometers. There we are. What'll it be? Motive, weapon, or witness? Hmm, where to begin? Uh, sorry, it is only a prototype. All right, that's enough of that. Everyone can go about their normal business, but remember, Nobody leaves the house until the mystery is solved. Once I have the deductomatic properly calibrated, this case will be elementary, dear Gromit. Elementary. In the meantime, why don't you uh, sniff up some clues for the deductomatic to process, eh, lad? You might start with the constable there. I expect he's got some juicy leads. I've got the suspects right where I want them. Written down on the official constabulary notepad. I'll crack the case with this, I will. It's got to be one of these three, but which one? Do you sense something, boy? Hmm... She clearly had a motive. And perhaps under that soft, knitted exterior lurks the soul of a hardened thumper. I must question her. But you do admit you had a motive. Eee, hey, happen I did. And I could have thumped him, buried him and drowned him twice over since I've been down here. 
None of you lot seems worried about that, though. That can't be everywhere, Miss Gabberly. Not with so many suspects to interview. More important than tending the victim of the crime, is it? Look here. I can't stand around chatting all day. I have a thumper to catch. See that you don't leave the house. Hey, took quite a thumping, didn't he? Can't say he didn't deserve it. Still can't leave him to rot all on his lonesome. Someone's got to tend to the great lug. He's oh. coming round. Oh, my heat. Somebody stop the spanning. There's a whirlpool I'm in. Don't fret, Pat. You've had a nasty knock. Did you see who thumped you? No, but I can almost remember what hit me. The terrible weapon that laid me low, it's... You saw the weapon what hit you? I, I think so. It was... Oh, I can't remember a thing. My brain's been boggled. Oh, you've got amnesia, you have. Amnesia? Oh, not that, as well as a bang to the head. Is it fatal? Just take things step by step, Chuck. What's the last thing you can remember? Well, I was upstairs, getting set for a jump junior on slide, but something wasn't right. Them little dogs of Felicity's were underfoot, and they wouldn't shut their yaps. Duncan McBiscuit doesn't take guff from yapping wee dugs, so I grabbed that bone toy of theirs and took it away. They didn't like it one bit. Oh, no! Best part was, when I squeezed the wee toy, it drove them crazy. Because it made this noise. This noise. Oh, what was that noise? I can't recall. My brain's turned to haggis. Don't fret, Pat. Just rest. It'll come back to you. <laughs> That's it. The sound of the toy. Now I remember. Go on, then what happened? Oh, I kept the toy and shut the wee doggies doing the slide. They didn't like that one bit neither. <laughs> I was having a grand time. I wanted a wee picky to remember by, so I went down to that photo thingamajig. I struck a manly pose and I was... I was... Uh, oh, Crivens, it's all fading away. I'll be forgetting my own name next. Oh, don't get yourself in a twist, love. It'll come back to you. You shouldn't eat candy floss, Mr. Paneer. Bad for your teeth. Oh, I'm not eating it. I just like having something to hold. You must try to stop worrying so. What? The thumper? Who knows where he'll strike next? I don't think there is a thumper. I think Duncan just fell over and wandered off by himself. He's a clumsy oaf, you know. Aye, he is heavy on his feet, that's for sure. He'll bounce back. He always does. It's Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee I'm worried about. Those silly accusations hurt their feelings. I just hope playing dress-up will lift their spirits. A new look is a tonic for the soul, don't you find? Great, I don't know how to play dressing-up games as it happens. Doggy dress-up, silly. I just need to pick the right outfits. So many to choose from. Do you like the pretty pictures? His holiday didn't turn out quite the way he'd planned, did it? He's like a little boy, crazy for candy floss. My poor little Duncan. All he wanted was to take me out on a date. Perhaps I'll let him, if we ever get out of here.
That's right. I remember. Go on. I was taking a picky, holding a stick of candy floss. Oh, I love that stuff, me. I got my hunger up. Just then, like an answer to my prayers, the gong sounded for supper. I came to table, and there I found heaven, my lovely lass, Felicity. I remember the fine, sweet smell of her, like... She smelt like... Um, Oh, blast it all. My nose is a blank. I cannot recall. Give it time, love. You'll remember. That's it! The sweet scent of felicity! How could I forget? I remember! I remember everything now! I'm cured! You've cured my ham knees! You cured me, and... and... I were a right numpty with you, weren't I? Still are, I reckon. But don't go weepy on me now. Tell me what happened after you sat down to supper. I was making a toast. When the lights went it, my eyes were adjusting to the dark when... Thump! <gasps> who thumped you? Oh, I never saw who, but I saw what. The supper gong mallet! That's what hit me! The supper gong mallet? You sure, Chuck? Sure? Oh, aye! Look! Look what it did to me! Ooh! Eee, that's a crime, that is. No wonder your mind's been a blank. What kind of person would do that? They should be locked up. You go back to sleep now, love. Get some rest. That's an extra fluffy batch. Can't do any harm to trade up. Just this once. Oh, crikey, it's heavy. Must be family-sized floss. Ah, Grummet. You must know what the debonair dog likes. Why don't you help me pick an outfit for my precious darlings? Use your doggy fashion sense and choose your favourite hat, glasses and collar. That's a good choice. But one of my sailor hats is missing. Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee like to wear matching outfits. Topping. Classic. 
dressy. Hoochie Woo and Tinky Wee will love this. Hoochie Woo, Tinky Wee. Time for dress up, my dears. Oh, look at this. Hello. You found Mr. Sneaky, you clever things. I was afraid he'd never turn up. Now we're really ready for some fun, aren't we? Let's get dressed up. The poor things are shy. Would you mind leaving us alone for just a little while? It's only you, Gromit. For a moment, I thought... Well, never mind. I'm sorry, lad, but if you want some candy floss, you'll have to get your own. I'm rather... attached to mine. of these suspects knows Summit, but who to question first? If I keep staring long enough, I'm sure I'll detect Summit eventually. Caught a scent, have you? Hmm, his motive is clear enough, but could this apparently gentle purveyor of fine groceries be a Jekyll and eyed character perhaps? A vicious thumper in disguise? I must interrogate him! Candy floss down while I'm interviewing you, if you please. Ooh. I'll ask you again, and this time I want a straight answer. Did you, or did you not, thump Duncan McBiscuit? Did you not? I mean, you did not. Uh, that is to say, me, not you. I mean, I mean, not you, me, but not me. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Just you watch yourself, Mr. Paneer, or I'll be watching you. Got it? Not another word. Phew. What happened to my little friend and protector? I'll have to spin up another.
three little suspects. One of them's got to be the thumper. You can do this, Ernest Dibbins. What is it, boy? Yes, I'll have a little chat with the Major. Perhaps he knows something he doesn't know he knows. And if you don't believe me, I invite you to inspect the evidence. Are you having a laugh? Enough questions! We're wasting time! The spies could be signaling their ship. If they give away our position, we're done for! <sighs> All right, yes, fine. So tell me what these so-called spies of yours looks like. Don't mind if I do. It was dark. Dark as a darkened room. Then the door cracked open, and I saw them! Swarthy little men, with sunken eyes and primitive tattoos, dragging Duncan's limp body. Sailors, judging by their uniforms, natives of the South Seas, I'd say. Stake my reputation on it. Did they look like this? No, no, no. Eyes more sunken, with heavy brows. That's better. Add nautical tattoos round their necks, and don't forget the uniform. There we are. A hint more menace. Just a hint now. Yes, now you've got it. Those are the villains I saw. Right, so this is what they look like, eh? Post that picture to every Jack Tar in the Navy. We've got to stop them before they make landfall. That's just what I'll do. The man means well, but he's a couple of bricks short of the full hod. to see you, Private. Oh, oh, you found it. Good boy. Now, Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee can play sailor again. Does the nice doggy woggy want to choose another outfit? Show me what doggies like best. Aye aye, Captain. Jaunty. Classic. Good dog. Nice choice. Tinky wee! It's dress up time, my darlings. Don't fuss, sweeties. You can go back upstairs in a minute. Right now, I need you to sit still. Mr. Gabble is news agent. Now open for business. Is that a customer I hear? Oi! You want to shop here? You gotta follow my rules. Do you hear? Take what you like and I'll put it on slate. Business will sort out payment later. Got that? Oi! And don't nick nothing while you're about it. Blimey! That were easy. I don't know why Winnie makes so much fuss.
me pick another outfit, Gromit. Aye, aye, Captain. Jaunty. I do like those glasses, but I'm not sure they're still in style. And we wouldn't want my darlings walking around in last season's fashions, would we? It isn't fair. While I'm stuck in here, fashion is marching on without me. This is going to be such fun. Good you will. Take you away. It's dress-up time, my darlings. Aren't you cute? Yes, you are. Run along and play. Oh, what a nice present. That's a stylish look. I do admire those sunglasses. I suppose they're back in fashion. Seems I'm something of a trendsetter. Help me pick another outfit, Gromit. The very latest. Hoochie Woo and Tinky Wee will love this. Hoochie Woo, Tinky Wee. It's dress up time, my darlings. I've got it! You sure this time, Mr. Wallace? I'll summon the suspects. Right. You have accused Felicity's diminutive dogs of thumping Duncan McBiscuit. To prove it, you need a motive, a weapon, and a witness. Where do you want to start? Right. That's the one. What's the one? Uh, motive. I've solved the motive. Excellent! Tell us why uh, um, Wadgy Podge and Tinky Pink thumped Duncan McBiscuit. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Can you spare a motive, lad? I if you've got one, give it here. The motive is... this chew toy. Really? The pups are very attached to that toy. I know from bitter experience. Of course they are. Mr. Squeaky was a present from their mumsy. That doesn't make it a motive for hurting Duncan, though. Oh, yes it does. Duncan stole the toy from them doggies. Told me so himself. He never did. Oh, he did. If Mr. McBiscuit did indeed take their favourite toy, that could well be a motive for thumping. But why would Duncan want to take Mr. Squeaky? The very idea is ridiculous. Ridiculous? Possibly. But on the balance of probabilities, spot on. <gasps> I believe this motive meets the test of the law. You're on the way to proving your case, Wallace. You know the motive? What's next? Of course. Now we'll get the facts. Get what facts? Uh, the weapon. I've determined the weapon. Well done. Tell us what, um, what you Podge in Winky T used to thump Duncan. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Do you have anything resembling a weapon, lad? I could use one sharpish. The weapon is this mallet. 
Here you bang on the money this time, Wallace. I remember now. That's what it, Duncan, all right. He said so himself, and he's got the dent in his bonds to prove it. It all makes sense now. That's a maladjusted mallet, all right. Maladjusted? What makes you say that? Well, it looked all fluffy and pink and delicious, but underneath it were rock hard and not very tasty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Finnear. It appears that the mallet is indeed our weapon. Well done, Wallace. The case against uh, them two dogs is coming together. The only piece of the puzzle left is the witness. Lacking. Now we'll know the truth. The truth about what? Uh, the witness. I've identified the witness. Good show. Tell us who witnessed um, uh, uh, Tinky Woo and Potty Wee assaulting Mr. McBiscuit. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Uh, who would you pick for a witness, lad? My witness is Major Crumb. Quite right. I saw him. It was black as pitch. The door cracked open, and I saw him dragging away the body. Short, hairy fellows with sunken eyes and tattooed necks. Sailors from the South Seas. Spies! Spies from abroad! Not this again. I think we've heard enough. Wait, Major. Did your spies look like them too? Lord heavens! That's them, all right. I'd recognize them anywhere. Put those spies in irons. Don't be silly. They're puppies. Dogs of war, more like. War? war. Oh, there is no war. What? All right, let's let sleeping dogs lie, shall we? The main point is, the Major saw these two dragging away Mr. McBiscuit. Isn't that right, Major? It most certainly is. In that case, according to the law, he is a legitimate witness. Wallace, you've shown us motive, weapon, and witness. And according to the powers vested in me as an officer of the law, I now pronounce the case solved. Duncan McBiscuit was thumped by a mallet because of a stolen chew toy. The crime being witnessed by Major Crumb. The perpetrators of this evil deed were none other than the canine criminals Poojie Woo and Tinky Wee. No, oh, it can't be. My darlings are precious, kind, insu wincy doggies, not hooligan hounds. I knew it. Wallace knew it. Put him in chains. Throw away the key. Batten down the hatches. Cabin doors to manual. All in a day is detective work. Oh, I really do feel fit. Ooh. Oh, dear. Lad, the drain must have come unplugged. That's handy. Oh, seems to have created a bit of a current. Help, Gromit! I've got that sinking feeling. We're all going down the drain! Oh, 
my kitty up. I'm feeling all popsy turdy. Without a paddle! Above. They followed their toy down the drain. Well, I'll give them one thing, they're dogging to the end. Welcome aboard, lad. Just a short jump to dry land, eh? No, no, Gromit! I'm about to be flushed! Do something! You'll blow yourself to smithereens! Gotcha! Thank heavens we've made it, Gromit! We're back on dry land! That's one you owe me, pal. Um, I do hope everyone's had an unforgettable holiday! and that you'll consider visiting West Wallaby Street Waterworld again next year. <laughs> Gromit, where are you, lad? We've got quite a clean-up job in front of us. No time for dawdling. Gromit!
should do it, lad. Our brand new Infini flavor ice cream makers ready for business. Patent pending, of course. Its infrared taste analyzer can sample any flavor and turn it into a delicious ice cream. What do you say, Gromit? Fancy pushing the button on our inaugural batch? Wensleydale cream, anyone? Look at it churn, lad. Just in time to be road tested in front of paying customers at the fair this weekend. And all in a good cause, hmm? Miss Flit says it's to raise money to rebuild the donk shelter. The poor pups have been homeless for too long. Imagine if you had no place to call home sweet kennel from it. Hmm, must be the breeze. Miss Flit says the strays have been making mischief all over town. On Tuesday, Mrs. Gabbley's shop was terrorized by a gang of terriers. No doubt they'll come to heel once they've a proper roof over their heads. I'm sure everyone will give generously at the fair to build them a new home. I can't be the only dog lover in town. Mighty Nora Gromit, wild dogs, stray scoundrels, mangy good-for-nothing mongrels mangling me machine. They must be some of the escapees. Oh no, me crank. Me lever. The flavor engraver, the brains of our custom flavor scanner lad, it's been scrambled. The four-legged beans. I'm sorry lad, but this is some serious damage. I suppose it's nothing that can't be fixed. I'll tinker with the flavor engraver if you track down our filched crank and our lifted lever. And this cute one's going to need to be calmed down as well. Mind you, it'll take a month of ice cream Sundays to put things right if I can't patch things up. You've got to get them in order if we're going to have the Infini flavor ready for the fair this weekend. Come on, lad, you're a dog. You can reason with them. All that hard work fouled up by a few rogue whippets. We're going to have to calm that one down if we're ever going to roll this machine out of here. Your old toy certainly did the trick, didn't it, lad? Oh my, you used to being so attached to it. Took quite a spell to wean you off it, in fact. Now we can focus on getting this machine up and running. Oh, Gromit, this machine might not be completely cream crackered after all. Let's have a shifty. It's still a bit uh, discombobulated, lad. He swiped it again! Not quite done painting the sign yet, Gromit. 
that's a nice shade of blue though, wouldn't you say? Careful, Gromit. The Infini flavor motor is volatile without its crank. That sign would be a nice finishing touch if we could get the machine back up and running. Any luck with the mischief makers? Morning, private. At ease, private, at ease. I'm sure by now you've received intelligence about the morale-raising ops this weekend. Should be a jolly old time. Like when Ensa used to come and rouse the troops, reminded the squaddies what they were fighting for. I remember being stationed in Algeria, and the association organized a whole day of fanfare. Unbelievable! There was Fatima the Snake Charmer, the ever-popular Monkey Toss competition, even a couscous eating contest. Which reminds me, I expect you to be at the fair when I display my digestive prowess. <laughs> the pie-eating contest, Private. You must have seen the sign-up sheet in town. Nobody will challenge the great major, though. I shall be uncontested. They don't call me Cool Hand Crumb for nothing, you know. Those are my biscuits, Private. And very delicious they are, too. Can't share them with you, though. For optimal nutritional efficiency, today's soldiers must stick to their rations. So, no wicky-wickies for you, I'm afraid. Oh, tremendous flavor. So long, Ivan. Hello, Gromit lad. How's Mr. Wallace? Have you heard about the fundraiser? I've never been to a proper town fair before.
morning, pet, out for walkies. Certainly a grand day for it. Anything I can do for you? What you got there, Chuck? A pie-eating contest. Well, isn't that festive? Me? Oh, I don't know about that. I, I do love the odd meat pie, but a scoffing contest? That wouldn't be ladylike, would it? <laughs> You've trouble enough appearing ladylike without a meat pie in your gob. Oh, do I? Tell that to Postman. He seemed quite taken with me this morning. It's only because he's got an eye defect. Oh, shut up, you curmudgeonly codger. You know what, Chuck? I will sign up for the contest. I think it's a splendid idea, and I plan on winning. In a most ladylike fashion, naturally. Let's see. Oh, just me and the Major, is it? Hmm. He's no match for Winnie Gabberly. There you go, Gromit. I expect you to attend my victory party. Carry on, Scullyard. Ah, yes, the pie-eating contest. Nobody's signed up yet to take on the mighty Major Crumb. Pity, I'd love to meet another man. Toe to toe on the field of battle, mano a mano, feasting to the death until the best man wins. Edwina? She thinks she can out-eat the likes of me? Ho ho ho! That's a good one, Private. I'd love to see her staring down the barrel of a ketchup bottle. There's just no way she can win. Impossible. She could never. <laughs> These blinking biscuits. I've been munching on them all day. They're going to fill me up. Private! Attention! Get rid of these vile things! I've got to prepare for battle! My guts must be ready for all the pie I can throw at them if I'm going to crush that woman. She's challenged the wrong man! Battle stations! You let the dogs out. This mangy whippet is is ravaging my roses. Came hurtling out of your master's house with some sort of bone in its mouth. Hmm. Feeding the strays really is the last straw. Now he's gone underground, and Lord knows what he's doing to my roots. And where's Wallace when I need him? Are there no real men left in this world to protect a woman's property? Don't just stand there. Do something. You're a dog. Can't you reason with him? And with little damage. Now be sure it never happens again. I don't want to see any more of your canine companions on my property. Do you understand? With a combination of infrared scanning and molecular chemistry, the flavour engraver can imbue our ice cream with any flavour imaginable.
I suppose that lever does look a bit like an old bone, doesn't it? No wonder the crafty canine went and buried it. Give a dog a bone and into the ground it goes. It's their nature. Oh no. Did our fastening nut go missing? It holds the lever in place. It's a critical part of the apparatus, Gromit. Oh, this is no good, lad. That was my last number 12. What rotten luck. Hmm? Look at that! He found our nut! Fantastic, Gromit! Uh, perhaps I was a bit hard on him before. I didn't know the little one had a penchant for tinkering. Oh, he's just afraid. Heavens above, he's a positively petrified pooch. Poor little lad, we ought to call him Twitch. And there we have it, lad. Uncrossed a few cross wires and our flavour engraver is as good as new. Now we ought to be back in business. Off we go, lads. Nothing can stop our Infini flavour ice cream from taking off now. Hmm? Bit late for the post, eh? Oh, hello there. Uh, can I help you? Oh, good heavens, no. The question is rather, how can I help you? Name's Muzzle. Monty Muzzle. Philatelist, philosopher, philanthropist, and purveyor of fairground amusement. I hope by now you've heard about Monty Muzzle's Save the Dogs fundraiser fair to be held this weekend. Oh, uh, yes, we have. Uh, Gromit and I were just... Oh, uh... glad to hear it. I was deeply saddened to hear of your recent tragedy, and I'm making it my duty as a dedicated and devoted dog lover to help you all raise the necessary funds to repair your canine shelter. Imagine all those precious animals out on the streets. A tragedy. What a shame for all those dogs. But Gromit and I might have the perfect contribution for the fair. We were just putting the finishing touches on our patent-pending Infini Flavor ice cream machine. Ice cream, you say? Ooh, who doesn't love ice cream? The creamy coldness, the satisfying sweetness, the profit margins. And our, our machine has custom flavor technology. Hmm. Its flavor scanner extracts taste molecules from any sample provided. We're able to make limitless varieties to suit any customer. My, that does sound impressive. Oh, bye, Eck, Mr. Walrus. I know a good money-making opportunity when I smell it. What do you say to this? With my financial firepower and your unique ice cream maker, we could put an Infini Flavor retail outlet on every beachfront from Blackpool to Bognor Regis. The world will be your Knickerbocker glory. Franchising. Do you hear that, lad? We could be ice cream barons. If you bring your invention to the fair and manage to make a hefty contribution for this most needed, um, uh, uh, oh yeah, dog shelter. It's a deal. Gromit and I couldn't be more excited. Oh, our in-house creamery assures us peak freshness. Speaking of the dogs, Gromit and I have come across three little lads who need new lodgings. Well, look at that. Aren't they the most precious things you've ever seen? My charity begins now, and I've got the perfect home for them. Yeah, quick-looking devils, too. Well, I won't take up any more of your time, Mr. Willard. Walkies. Come on, you. Your new home awaits. Off they go, lad. Say goodbye. Be seeing you and your contraption at the fair, Mr. Wallace, and uh, be sure 
to bring your wallet. Roll up, roll up, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Monty Muzzle's Fundraise Affair. It fair warms my heart to see so many charitable souls here today. So let me warm yours by selling you a handful of tickets, available for a nominal fee, the proceeds of which will put a smile on the face of a homeless and abandoned puppy. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, them tickets is good for every attraction. You can fry your favorite food, take on a chicken in a game of wits, or ride the mighty muzzler. Every penny goes to charity, every ticket, in short, will wag a tail. I say, Gromit, isn't this a thrill and such a noble cause, rebuilding a shelter for your canine companions? Oh, your new chum must have dropped his toy in excitement. I bet the little fella's having a grand day out, probably never been to a fair before. Hey, that must be the remains of one of the flies that was blowing around this morning. Can't abide litter, so I tore it up and offered it as slips of paper to the punters. Here are some tickets, lad. Go and find your friends and have some fun. <laughs> Fancy a cone, Gromit? Let's see, count this row across, assume that the jar is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm, can't be certain. Don't think a little teamwork is against the rules, eh? Here, yeah, you have a go. That seemed like it could almost be right, Gromit. Cross your toes, lad. These are the last of the tickets. Congratulations. You are the winner of a grand and fantabulous prize. I yet we did it. Fantastic. We've won, Gromit. Congratulations, sir. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mosul. Quite a bit of brain power it did. So, what's the grand and fantabulous prize then, Mr. Mosul? I must say, I can't wait to see what I've won. Yes, well, um, yeah, just as it's always better to give than receive, um, I say the satisfaction of your triumph, plus our undying gratitude for the charitable donation you've made towards our noble cause, our prizes in and of and. Um, by themselves, wouldn't you say, Mr. Paneer? Chuck. Well, they're all very well, but I thought... Prizes that last a lifetime. Up here, and in here. But, but, but the sign says... Oh, quit bellyache in your big girl's blouse. <laughs> oh, um, it's hardly fitting for a gentleman such as yourself. Here, have a blinking bubblegum bubble. But... but... Oh, all right. And one for the mutt as well. Take care. Hey, 
you are, you coochie coos, you! Ah, the missus says I need more mates, does she? <laughs> well, I've got a virgin sky and bugs on sill to keep me company. You won't find me making up numbers at some flipping fair. Good, because you're not invited. Here, yeah, birdie. Come to Papa Gabberly. Don't really fancy chewing gum. What a man! Selfless, heroic, charitable. Hello, Gromit. Having a grand day out? Just trying to find the right blooming words. Have a pie to enter, do you? Give it here, and I'll get to it in due time. Quite the turnout of entries I've got. Bound to find a master of ceremonies in here somewhere. They just don't make men the way they used to. Except for Mr. Muzzle, of course. Hello, Gromit. Enjoying the fair? Must be easy to enjoy such simple pleasures when you're a dog. Not knowing the pain of unrequited love. You just wander through life, 
sniffing and scratching your way to happiness, while I must endure the loneliness of living without a man worthy of my hand. Oh, but then there is Mr. Muzzle raising all of those funds for our poor homeless pups. I've never seen such altruism in all my years. He may be of meager means himself, but he's rich in other ways. Oh, and what a handsome partner he'd make. Certainly compared to the rest of the town's buffoons. Are there no real men here worthy of the name? I want someone strong, brilliant and brave to lavish me with praise. For instance, I had my hair done this morning. And did anyone notice? Not one of them. I'm sure Mr. Muzzle would have, had he not been so busy. But what does a woman have to do to attract attention? <laughs> Wisdom from the other side. All right, yeah, create a clairvoyant codfish. Let's see what you have to say. Cravens, what a bunch of rubbish! Let's see if this fortune's got anything useful for my poem. Your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. Ah, that's no half bad, that is. I just work. I'm a blinking genius, I am! No need for these rotten lines! I've got a perfect one right here! Hello there, Felicity. Oh, hello, Duncan. You look ravishing today. Why, thank you, Duncan. In fact, I've written you a poem in honour of your astounding beauty. What? You've written a poem? Every last word. Really? Well, let's hear it then. <clears throat> Dearest Felicity, your eyes are as deep as the murkiest loch. Your teeth are as straight as Blackpool Rock. Your haunches are sturdy, your bearing is bold, and your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. I don't know what to say. Brilliant, eh? Just my hair! I did. Oh, Duncan, who could have guessed you're so sensitive and attentive to detail? Aye, my rugged Highland handsomeness may fool some, but inside, I'm nothing more than a caring and loving lamb. Come here, my little sugar plum fairy. been rolling around in the barnyard too long if my nose isn't mistaken. Oh, that's just my unique musk. Let's go down and stare longingly into each other's eyes. Thank you. 
Hey there, you meddling mutt. What are you doing up on this stage? Get down at once. I'm the only one allowed up on stage. The only other person allowed to disport themselves on my stage is the Master of Ceremonies of the Grand Pie-Eating Contest. And somehow I don't think with your limited canine brain you'll be able to create a pie deliciously mouth-watering enough to win the Bake Off and receive that honour. So if you don't mind, sling your blinking hook. Me and the Master of Ceremonies, i.e. not you, big ears. Imagine your life with less strife. This is booming, lad. That would taste very good, would it, lad? I mean, fish-flavored ice cream? Who ever heard of such a thing? Unless... You, uh, haven't made a new feline friend, have you, perchance? Oh, well, uh, yes, then. Uh, one fish-flavored ice cream coming up. Uh, step to it, lad. Hmm. 
This looks a bit different. A familiar, flaky crust. My, my, my. Oh, could it be? Oh, mm. oh yes, this is more like it. What a belter this one is. Oh, a crisp outside with a warm potato inside. Oh, this takes me back to my days as a boy. But, but it, it, it's still missing something. Some key flavour from it past. Now, still, I'll, I'll hold on to your entry as provisional for now. If you think of something to give it that definitive je ne sais what, uh, come back and I'll consider it. Uh, till then, the competition's still open. Ah! A new addition to your shocking previous entry. I have no doubt that you almost certainly cheated, but without actual proof. I'll have to let that pass. Let's see how you did. Why, uh, this is, uh, yes, yes, resplendent. I've never tasted a pie quite like this. A savoury crust, enhanced by a one-of-a-kind flavour, if I am not mistaken, of lightly battered cod. Oh, yes. Your entry triggers deep, unhappy memories. Oh. I can see myself as a slip of a lad behind the counter in my mother's chippy. I'm the happiest lad there's ever been, eating complimentary portions of freshly fried North Sea cod and chips. Stupendous! How you did it, dog, I'll never know. But you've won. Congratulations. You're the first beast to become the master of ceremonies of the pie-eating contest. I'll be meeting you on stage then. Time to get this pie-eating contest underway. Be seeing you on stage in two shakes of a dog's tail. Gather round, ladies and gentlemen, gather round. Our first order of business is to celebrate this fine figure of a dog as winner of the pie baking contest. That's a boy, Chuck. I knew you could do it. Hey! And to honor this achievement, Fido Ear will preside as master of ceremonies of the pie eating contest to commence shortly. I'm here. The major doesn't stand a chance. Ha! I once ate a kidney pie the size of a Shetland pony, and I had room for dessert and coffee. Your starter's pistol, doggo. And now, I'd just like to say a few words. Where are me blinking notes? Mm, you were up here just a minute ago. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, um... It's not every day that tragedy strikes a helpless town like this. But I'm most honoured to be here in your moment of need to help you all collect enough funds to rebuild the orphanage. Um, uh, that is, uh, the orphanage for lost dogs. And I'm delighted to say that I haven't seen such an outpouring of charitable giving among fairgoers since, well, since, uh, 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 since uh, uh, the Great Lancashire Earthquake of, uh, oh, let me see now, uh, uh, some, uh, yes, some years ago. I don't remember hearing about that. Ah, oh, dreadful it was. Teapots tossed from their cosies. Sheep shaken right out of their fleeces. Most dreadful indeed. So, keep up the good work here today, and be sure to spend, spend, spend at our wonderful attractions, as it's all in such a very, very good cause. Now, without further ado, uh, Colonel Crumbs and uh, Mrs. Gobbledygook uh, will go head to head in the pie eating contest. Now, Mutt, pull the trigger.
Bye. It's been a busy week. Just one good deed after another. First, I takes in three homeless hounds. Then I helps a town of do-gooders cough up the cash for a noble cause. <laughs> yeah. And now I've trapped me a tricksy little trespasser. Now listen here, mutt. I built this fair up from the sweat of me brow and a pile of scrap. And if you think I'm going to let a molly-coddled mongrel chuck a spanner in the works, you don't know Monty Muzzle. Aye, your time on wheel comes soon enough. And being man's best friend, you wouldn't want to stop the ride and disappoint your punters now, would you? But until it's your turn, you can blinking well stay put. Oh, and don't start whining and yelping for help. You'll have my security system to deal with if you don't keep the noise down. What is it? What's going on in here? Up to something in here, are we? Down, mutt. It's not your dinner time yet. Hmm. Seems to have been a false alarm. But I'll be back in here at the drop of a hat, if there's any monkey business. What's going on here? What's all the racket about? Oh, another blinking dead dog. The workshy whelp hadn't even been for walkies yet. <laughs> Pity. Ah, oh, get off me, you filthy beast. Oh, That'll be an extra few hours pulling duty for you. No more out of you.
We're slowing down already. Muscle, your blinking ride's not fit for service. Blinking engine must have, uh, um, <laughs> died again. Ah, there we go. Oh, hello, Twitch. Uh, Gromit was looking for you. Enjoying the fair? Oh, I see. You'd like to have a go on the ride? Well, I don't know. Uh, where the heck's Gromit? He should be showing you around. Uh, no? Well, uh, I suppose I can take a break. Let's go. I don't know if they let dogs on board, Twitch. Steady on. I know it's not fair, Twitch, but we can always ask. E easy there, boy. I've got quite a bit of strength for a little fella. Blinking Nora. You mean poor Gromit's inside the ride? What happened, lad? Monty Muzzle? Heavens above. Uh, Twitch, you better stay out of sight. I've got to see about getting Mr. Muzzle to shut down his ride. One last bite, and another pie is gobbled by Gabbily. <laughs> Your duty is as neglected as an abandoned puppy. Oh, I've never abandoned Gromit. Oh, I shouldn't poke around behind any of Mr. Muzzle's attractions. Oh, no. Your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. Oh, well, uh, perhaps this one isn't for me. Your home smells of a patch of mold. Oh, we've the odd bit, I know, but it's not that bad. The contest hasn't ended yet. Why, no, it's a last man... <clears throat> woman's standing competition. Oh, who's winning? <clears throat> As if you had to ask, man. <laughs> by my count, the current leader by a thick crust is Mrs. Gavalee. 
Hogwash! Woohoo! Mmm! And I'm relishing every bite! Ah, I'm just getting warmed up! We'll see about that. Mr. Wallace, would you mind bringing Paneer this slip of paper here when you've a moment? Right, oh. It's meat pies by dawn, and my heck, look at that crust fly! Uh, a note, Mr. Paneer. Your duty is as neglected as an abandoned puppy. Hmm, that's odd. Stop the ride! That's enough. Suppose I'd better get back to the station. Duty calls. The would-be chomping champion continues to shovel pie down his gullet. But the Major seems to have met his match in Vinny, the Wonder Nosher. Uh, a note, Mr. Paneer. Your hair could be mistaken for Pirate's gold. But Duncan? Isn't that the last line of your poem? The one you wrote specially for me? Why, uh, yes, my dear. Its greatness is such that uh, it's already been quoted. The poem you wrote each and every line of? Why, uh, yes, of course. How odd. And that little pick-me-up comes courtesy of Monte Muzzle's fortune-telling machine. Generously shared by Mr. Wallace. A fortune? Wallace? Honey cakes? I can explain. Explain nothing. It's plagiarism, lies, deceit. I'm through with you, Duncan McBiscuit. Ferocity, my wee North Country now. I wrote all those other lines. Especially I want to be your haunches. Uh, a note, Mr. Paneer. Your home smells of a patch of mould? Eee, Mr. Paneer, you've clearly never been to the House of Gabberley, and now you never will. Excuse me, Paneer, Mrs. Gabberley wanted me to give you this. Ah, must be a message to read out for the fair. <clears throat> Testing, one, two, one, two. All fairgoers are cordially invited to attend Mrs. Vinnie Gabberley's victory celebrations to be held later this evening at the Gabberley residence. Uh, that's everyone including Major Croc, so long as he's humbled by defeat and pie fatigue. A scandalous suggestion. You'll regret the day you taunted a crap. <laughs> Enjoying a bit of a lead, eh, Mrs. Gabberley? Oh, I think I am, but I'm enjoying myself so much, I've lost count. I can't believe you're in the lead. Look at the munching major. Happen, but don't forget the tortoise and the hare, Mr. Wallace. Hayek, oh, look at these. Crum and Gabberly now, putting away pies as if they haven't eaten for a week. You've fallen a bit behind, eh, Major? Nonsense! Enemy propaganda! Don't believe a word of it. Soon as I've claimed victory, I'll be back on my favourite airborne attraction. Oh, right. The ride. Oh, the rest of me finished pies. The rest? Oh, my stomach told me I'd got through more than just these appetizers here. And Major Crumb has just learned that Mrs. Gabberley is in the lead by a most devastating pie margin. Oh, not feeling too tickety-boo right now. I... I think I might have been outpied by the enemy. And it seems the Major might be giving up, though he's only nine pies behind. 
Nein! That's it! I capitulate! I surrender! Hoist the white napkin of chronic pie fatigue! Yippee! And down goes the Major! Out for the count! At a boy, Mrs. Gavily! Congratulations! Woohoo! Remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you like pies, Paneer's Purveyors of Peculiar Produce is open daily for all of your baking and pie-eating needs. I can't believe she beat me. I'll never be able to show my face in the officer's mess again. Never mind, Major Crumb. You guzzled gamely. Perhaps you just bit off a bit more than you could chew. Perhaps a man must know his limits. <sighs> the only thing that can lift my spirits now is a spin on that RAF ride, if you'll excuse me. Oh, I must have put on five stone. Too heavy? Balderdash! I was only on her this morning. Oh, just over our limit, I'm afraid, Corporal Crumb. You must have piled on pounds since then. That blinking contest! And I'm a major, don't you know? Aye, a major liability. So, you're banned, for safety's sake. Perhaps go for a jog or summit, and work off some of that extra weight. A balloon, always a good for a lift. With the tiniest little lift, I'd be cleared for takeoff. A balloon, Major Crumb? Who doesn't love a festive balloon? Used to tie the old balloon to our knapsacks when we were in the long grass to distinguish ourselves from the enemy. Uh, perhaps you're ready for the ride now? You might be right. I'm feeling lighter on the feet already. Oh. Weight limit bust. All aboard. Wahoo! Tucked away! Cabin door to manual. Ready for takeoff. Blam! Yeah! Oh, heaven! Major Crumb's carrying too much excess baggage! The ride's going to burst in seams! We've been hit! Oh, my giddy ants! Oh, my! Those poor tops were trapped inside of that dreadful machine the Rome entire it. time! Rome it! Are you all right, lad? Where is that monster, Monty Muscle? He was just here a moment ago. Up, up and away. Hi, what are you doing? What is that? It's Monty Muscle! And our money! And Twitch! Arrivederci! Monty Muscle's stock is on the rise! This is no time to jettison the cream, Gromit. We don't do floats. What'll it be, lad? Once we for two. Oh, good show, Muscle, old chap. Not exactly what I planned, but a clean escape, nevertheless. A few quid, and one unexpected runt richer. What do you say, boys? Think we can find work for this emaciated mongrel? That's what I thought. Oh, Knickerbocker glory! He's got a head start, lad. We've got to find a way to close the gap. The hatch on the churning tank has sprung open.
out a new flavor scan, the Infini flavor defaults to vanilla. Hey, looks like we've sold out of all our cones. That's good news. Without a new flavor scan, the Infini flavor defaults to vanilla. Without a new flavor scan, the Infini flavor defaults to vanilla. That's unhygienic, that is. Anything could fall in there and soil the batch. Now we've shed some pounds. I wonder what could have been that heavy. With puncture-free lead-lined tires. Those didn't come cheap, you know. And how are we going to land without any undercarriage? <laughs> Look, we're gaining on him. Without a new flavor scan, the Infini flavor defaults to vanilla. The old churning arm had its work cut out with that batch. Whew. Things are getting a bit sticky back there. Direct hit, lad. Hey, now he's up a gum tree. We'll catch him now. Knock up my engine, will they? I can still outrun them with the wind at me back. Hey, hey, they've run out of lift! Ah, sorry, my little twitching bag of bones, but no one's coming to save you now. Where do you think you're going with that? Eh, fine then. 
Let go! Escape me, you flea-ridden friend! Hey, easy, easy. You've already been fed today. Ow! What? Get away! Stay away! Now, listen, chickens. Lucky grab, Gromit. Let's get out of here. Whoa, whoa. Ah. We're one scoop too many, lad. Oh no, Gromit. Brace for impact. Oh, ah. Gromit. Help, Gromit. Muzzle's moustache has gone flat. Steal from me? Monty Muzzle? That's not how it works, sunshine. This is all your fault, dog. Now look what you've done, you beastly animal. Don't lose that arm, Gromit. Nothing a little blue can't fix. Give that back right now. If you want your master to take you for walkies ever again, you'll be very careful with that. Careful, I said. No! My money! Oh, my beautiful money! Help! We're still falling, lad! Quick! We could do with some more air. Huh? It should hold us for just long enough. They might have flown too high and suffocated in the atmosphere. Happened to many a bomber in the war. And all to save a poor defenseless puppy. <laughs> Who would have thought Wallace was so selfless and brave? Aye, but more importantly, that blinking fairground felon still got our cash. He's due a soak in the mouth and a kick in the head. Honestly, Duncan, the last thing we need is more violence. We need heroes. Look, by Zeus's beard, what on earth is that? It's a giant moustache. Ah, uh, I've seen bigger. You're alive. Uh, yes, and saved by a whisper. Something of a close shave, eh, Gromit? Oh, ho. These poor pups won't go homeless after all, Gromit. Me and Mr. Gabley would be thrilled to take them in. No, we wouldn't. Pipe down, you misery guts. Great. Yet another mouth to feed. Three mouths. Oh, no. Anyway, Gromit, feel free to pop by for walkies any time you like. Your friends will always be here. Oh, that little one's quite the hero. Have to keep him out of trouble from now on. Wallace! Oh, that was a feat of incredible bravery. Oh, it was nothing, Miss Flit, really. All in a day's work for Gromit and me. Couldn't let Muzzle run off with our twitch now, could we? A man like you is one in a million, Wallace. Your courage, your... Selflessness, your aerial acrobatics. You could have been killed, yet you saved the poor whippets, apprehended the monstrous mountain muzzle, and saved everyone's fortunes. You're a true hero to the town. Oh, um, 
Well, uh, um, thank you very much, Miss Flit. Mm hmm. Uh, now, if only I could find the piece I that. I uh... feel a little awkward asking you this, Wallace, but I was wondering. With a bit of elbow grease, I'm sure Gromit and I can have this up and running again by Christmas. Wallace, I. I have a proposal for oh, you. Oh, I wonder where this goes. Oh, Wallace! Uh, yes? A proposal and a ring! How. how. Oh, shocking! I beg your pardon, Miss Flint. Oh, and so polite. Now, calm yourself, Felicity. Will I, Felicity Flint, marry you, Wallace? What? Now, pull yourself together, Felicity, my girl. You mustn't rush into this. I'm honoured that you would have me as your bride, Wallace. But I must think it over. I shall give you my answer within the week.
Grummet, I must stop eating cheese last thing. It's given me terrible dreams. Oh, 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 oh. oh uh, last night, I dreamt I'd accidentally become engaged to our neighbor, Miss Flit. Oh, oh, oh. Can you imagine? What's this? Oh, no, lad. So it wasn't a bad dream after all. It's a real life flipping nightmare. It's all coming back to me at the fair. I found that lug nut and she thought it was a... Oh my kitty aunt. Talk about matrimonial misunderstandings. You've got to do something, Gromit. No. I've got to do something. I must go and speak to Miss Flit at once. I apologize and explain it was all a terrible mistake. I'm sure Miss Flit will understand. She'll probably be relieved when she learns I wasn't proposing marriage after all. It's not as if we've much in common. <laughs> well, I suppose there's nothing for it but to, uh... Oh, Major Crumb. Yes? Ah, morning, Wallace. I've come about a professional matter of the utmost delicacy and secrecy. You have? Oh, wonderful. Uh, step into my consulting room and tell me all about it. Seems I'm going to be tied up for a while, Gromit. Uh, on business, uh, why don't you go and put your ear to the ground and find out how the land lies next door? Great Aunt Prudence, you came so quickly. Of course, Felicity. An urgent summons from one's only living relative and heir to one's fortune can mean only one thing. Man trouble. Now, who is the blighter this time? I'll box his ears if he's been toying with your affections. Oh, no, no trouble as such, Aunt Prudence. But, well, there has been an important development on the matrimonial front, which... Pardon me, Aunt Prudence. I think I spy an ugly little intruder. I positively love fungi. Come, let's go inside for a cup of tea. Have you come, my old child? Man trouble always makes me hackles rise and my petticoats fluster. In his spare time, he likes to tinker a little. Tinker? Yes, um, inventions and such like. A handyman? Well, you'll obviously have to put a stop to the inventing. 
Certainly not in the house. Can't be tolerated. Oh, oh no. Far too messy and intrusive. Well, I think you've told me all I need to hear. And so? So long as he doesn't leave his contraptions lying around all over the house, he sounds a very suitable suitor. So our engagement has your blessing? I don't see why not. Unless... Yes? Unless, of course... Well, he's not... He's not a member of that... Place, is he? That appalling country club whose name alone makes me shudder. You mean Prickly Thicket? Oh, yes. Oh, heavens, child, you know our family history. We flits have never associated with those dreadful Prickly Thicketers. Oh, you needn't worry, Aunt Prudence. Wallace isn't the Prickly Thicket type. Morning, Mr. Paneer. Constable Dibbins. Delivering the mail as well this morning? Aye. Post is off sick. He's got the mumps and I've got the ump. Sorry to hear that. Her Majesty's mail must be delivered. And PC Ernest Dibbins has never shrunk from duty. Even when such duties aren't even part of his blinking job description. Here's your post. Ah. Couldn't help but notice the coat of arms, Mr. Paneer. A prickly thicket, isn't it? Happen. So, you remember then? Hmm? Oh, aye, aye. Practically my second home. Is it now? That's a very interesting coincidence. I was just saying to myself the other day, Ernest Dibbins, it's time you joined a... Oh, my! Excuse me, Constable. What are you staring at? Get along now. Back off. Caught him trying to nick your letter. The important one from ahem, Prickly Thicket. Oh, that's only the envelope. I've got the letter here. Not bad news, I trust. Oh no, quite the reverse. It's my turn to propose a new member. Is it really? Well, I never. It's a heavy responsibility. Not everyone's cut out to be a prickly thicketer. The candidate must be a gentleman of impeccable character. Someone who's always there for a friend in need. A pillar of the community. And, of course, a sportsman. Going to be a long search? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, the ideal candidate might be, uh, somebody who's very close to you. Oh? Aye. Somebody who's right in front of your nose, in fact. Ah, yes, of course. You mean Mr. Wallace, my near neighbor and one of my best customers. Wallace? He's no blinking sportsman. He don't know one end of a golf club from the other. Well, that's true. And he's hardly a pillar of the community, like... Like who? Mr. Paneer. My dear. Mr. Paneer, who watches over this town centre like a shepherd watches his flock? Who sees to it that everybody stays on the straight and narrow? Oh, you mean you? <laughs> but don't forget, you forgot to find me after that business with the bad bangers last month. Only on account of me soft heart. It's me only failing. But don't start getting ideas. I'll let you off with a warning once, but just once. Of course, Constable. Now, you better start getting these crates put away. They're blocking a public thoroughfare. Oh dear, not more crates. Good day, Mr. Paneer. I'll leave you to uh, think things out. Out of me way, you. Don't suppose you could use a few crates of super sticky nut butter, can you? I ordered five tubs, but the daft paper at warehouse put me down for 500. How am I supposed to shift 500 tubs of super sticky nut butter? Wait a minute. Take this home to your master. Free sample, courtesy of Paneer's produce. If you don't like it, you can always use it to fill in cracks before decorating. Closed. 
by order of the law, and all on account of a teeny tiny mouse. Oof, ridiculous, really. But you know Constable Dibbins, he'll let a lot of things go, but he's a stickler when it comes to vermin. Hey up, Gromit! Abner couldn't help noticing that little item in the society section. The one about your master and Miss Flit. It's true, then. Been keeping it a secret, though, sly devils. Ooh, careful with that. It's my last one, and it's reserved for Mr. Paneer. Ooh, it's all over tip papers this morning. How Monty Muzzle's fundraising funfair was a big fake, and how a certain ice cream vendor and his dog brung him to justice. Hey, you're the mutt what's responsible for my incarceration, aren't you? No hard feelings, mate. Come here. I've got a little present for you. Yes, I just remembered. No answers yet in the, uh, flit case, Gromit. You may want to use some of my equipment. That's right. Put the thumbscrews on her. This is a matter of the utmost importance, Wallace, or I wouldn't have come. I appreciate your faith in my skills, Major. Faith has nothing to do with it. Facts are what we need, man. Cold, hard facts. Of course. So, uh, uh, what have you lost? An object. Precisely. Oh, Constable Dibbins seems to be taking quite an interest in you this morning. Oh, yes. We're great chums, we are. He does me little favours, and I do the same for him. Is that so? Have you got my, uh... Here. Extreme pudding. Been looking forward to this issue. There's supposed to be an in-depth feature on the merits of natural rubber grips versus synthetic. Hello? What's this? Blinkin' Nora. Is that who I think it is? Well, I'll be. That's our Wallace, that is. Rookie of the Year. I didn't even know he played golf. Oh, he's a man of mystery and no mistake. The constable was just saying what a rotten sportsman Wallace is. Who will be eating his words when he sees that? Yes. What you thinking, Pat? Oh, nothing. The constable's still the best choice. After all, he's been very good to me. Hmm, must be nice to have friends in high places.
Your master didn't want it, is that what you're saying? I'll put it there with the others. I'll move it inside when I've cleared some space. <sighs> Can't really leave these crates in the street all day. Ah, my good friend Panea. Glad to see you're doing your civic duty. Oh, yes. <laughs> I wouldn't want to presume on our friendship. That's why I've always respected you, Mr. Paneer. Never want to take advantage of powerful friends. You know, when push comes to shove, the law must be obeyed. Honor, duty and golf. That's the prickly thicket motto. And a fine motto it is. A motto I could easily live by if, say, someone were to invite me to join the club. Say no more, Constable. I thought it over and... Pinky neck! Crikey! What kind of trick is this? Trick? Uh, no trick. Just a little mix-up. Optical illusion. If you'll just turn the other way for a moment, I'll... Turn the other way? I am an officer of the law, Mr. Paneer. But our friendship... I'm sorry, Mr. Paneer, but vermin's vermin. And vermin trumps friendship every time. So, that's how it's going to be, is it? Constable Dibbins, this is a pleasant surprise. Uh, what brings you to, uh... Here, package for you. What do you suppose this is about? It's from Prickly Thicket. Well, I never. They're inviting me to become a member. And they've even enclosed the club's official tank top. Imagine that, lad. A country club. Ho oh, ho! Oh, uh, we're going up in the world, eh, Gromit? Miss uh, Flit. Please, Wallace. You needn't be so formal. Not after yesterday. Call me Felicity. Uh, yes. Uh, about yesterday. I did leave you hanging in suspense, rather, didn't I? <laughs> Not in me. But I do have an answer for you now. You, you, you do? I couldn't take a step of this magnitude without first consulting my great aunt Prudence. And you'll be delighted to know she has given us her blessing. Isn't that wonderful? Her only caveat. <laughs> and it's almost too ridiculous to mention. <laughs> Is that she forbids us to marry if <laughs> if you're a member of <laughs> We reject the sticky picket that's a ball of cursed cricket. We tell all the sports to stick it. Golf for us is just the ticket. Hurrah! Hurrah for Prickly Thicket! Brother Wallace is duly sworn in in co conformance with Prickly Protocol. Devil if I care why I had to be Wallace, but what's done's done. Welcome to the club, Wallace. We await the opening whack. Swing the club, you tube! What's he doing here, Mr. Dibbins? <laughs> Stop in the name of the law! I hereby announce that in violation of Municipal Bylaw Number 486, as relating to sports and social clubs, use of, this club is to be closed forthwith. This is I will state, and I quote, 
Every registered golf and country club must be in possession of no fewer than one fully functioning golf course. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, by law. Pardon if I'm a bit, uh, shaky on the upswing, but are you saying that uh, we don't actually have a golf course? Not at the moment, anyway. Had one once. Dashed fine one it was, too. But uh, the deed was lost. Somewhere within the walls of this club. Some little time ago. 1649? Rotten year. It's a long and terrible story. It's history. And as of tomorrow morning, prickly thicket will be history, too. Enjoy your last day at the club, gentlemen. Well, that's only one thing for it, I reckon. Like the booby Bobby said, Let's enjoy our last day at the club. Capital idea. Perhaps I can get a game of chess in before tea. I still need to work on me cushion technique. <clears throat> uh, pardon me, but... But PC Dibbins is going to shut Prickly Thicket Golf Club because it hasn't got a golf course. Oh, that's a nice nice. Nice. cheek. And it hasn't got a golf course because... The deed proving its existence is lost. Yes, deed. Right, that's well right. then, there's nothing for it but to find the deed. Easier said than done, bloody. Prickly thicketers have been searching for centuries. Impossible quest, Wallace. Impossibilities are our speciality at Golden Retrieval. Of course. Now I remember. That's what I hired you fellows to find. The deed to Prickly Thicket Golf Course! Me clue finder. Ought to come in handy for finding clues. The Complete Gomeril's Guide to Golf. My Grandpa Rory were a great one for self-improvement. I'm still missing a clue or two. Hmm. Oh, in the rough, eh? Aye, yeah. Grandpa Rory had his share of heartaches. There's bound to be a clue nearby. What do you think of that, eh? Oh. Lucky shot. Lucky? That were my biscuit magic, that were. If I could just round up all the clues in the vicinity, I could begin to unravel this mystery. Quite a talker, eh? Grandpa Rory knew how to tell a tale, so they say. I can't make a proper start on this job till I found all the clues. Eureka! A clue! The golden key shall only be obtained by him who earned it. The golfer who, without a clue, took up the game and learned it. To hook and slice is never nice unless ye have direction. A book depicts, in stages six, the order of perfection. Aha! I've got it now! You have? Rook to pawn three! Oh, I, I think the pressure was getting to him. Mm. Aye, that were Grandpa Rory's darkest hour. I'm still missing a clue or two. I say, that face looks familiar. Wanna see how? Unless she were round about these parts 400 years ago. That there dusty old dowager is Duchess Flit. Her family owned much of the land hereabouts in those days. And that chappy sneaking out the back that were my great, 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 great grandpa, Lord Rory McBiscuit, come down for his holidays and missed the last coach back to Scotland. I do see a slight resemblance. 
Aye, he were a bonny lad, and a great one with the lassies. The Duchess couldn't get her fill of him, but as you can see, he cared for nobbit mucking about in a golf course. Twas Grandpa Rory who built Prickly Thicket. And uh, what did Duchess Flint have to say about that? Oh, threw her in a right rage it did. Had her men seize the course by force. Aye, and that's when her troubles began. If I could just round up all the clues in the vicinity, I could begin to unravel this mystery. I say, that one's a Roman. Aye, that one were Goodman Wellis, him and his evil hellhound Gimlet. There are pox on the pair of them. It's them for purse in the predicament we're in today. Really? Aye. For when the devilish Duchess Flit were seizing the golf course and planting flowers on it, my poor Grandpa Rory were desperate. He loved his prickly thicket golf course like a wee wifey, but he couldn't save it from Flit's men and their terrible tulip bulbs. So when they snatched the course from him, robbed him, they did. He hid the deeds to the land, hoping one day to reclaim it and restore it to the noble cause of golf. But that were his biggest mistake, hiring them two buffoons to help. You mean Goodman Whitless? Aye, and Gimlet is devil help. Local clockmakers and jacks of all trades they were. Grandpa Rory hired them to build a security system to protect the deed. Well, they built it all right. And made a dashed fine job of it, too. Brilliant. Inspired. Flit's men did their damnedest, but they couldn't disable the system. And nor could anyone else, including Goodman Whitless. Thanks to him, the deeds are still locked away in the walls here somewhere, guarded by his tick-tock state-of-the-art security system. Well, uh, I've done a bit of tinkering myself with security systems. Uh, do you know how this one works? Not a flippin' clue. You need three keys to switch it off, that's all I can. A gold one, a silver one, and a porcelain one. And these keys, uh, where are they to be found? Search me, pal. They're well hid, too. Got security systems of their own, they say. I can't make a proper start on this job till I've found all the clues. What's this? Behold the foolish puppy dog. He keepeth very busy. He seeketh for the silver key, and spinneth till he's dizzy. The hours pass, he stoppeth not, in daytime nor in nighttime. Methinks he'll findeth not his prize, until you see the right time. Lincoln, Nora, this is a riddle and no mistake. Oh, call that poetry, Wallace. I think it's a clue, Major Crumb. Could this be a clue? Only the man who has mastered the Ganges and made the impossible shot is worthy to pocket the porcelain key that will slide in the porcelain slot. Master the Ganges? Does that mean the river? Or could it mean it? Could it mean what? Nothing. Just a silly superstition. Can you help me decipher this clue, Mr. Paneer? Only the man who has mastered the Ganges... Shh! It's a story I first heard at my grandmother's knee about a secret golf grip that men have devoted their lives to discovering. Oh, that's all stuff and nonsense. The Ganges grip is an old wives' tale and nothing more.
can't take tea today, love. Prickly thickets on a bit of a sticky wicket. And only golden retrieval can save the day. Grab our detection kit and let's... What's up, Chuck? Uh, uh, good afternoon, ladies. Uh, is there anything I can do for you? <laughs> Wallace! Oh, um, um, oh dear me. My grandniece is a tender-hearted girl, Mr. Wallace. She hates to see a man ruin his life. Uh, I don't believe I've had the pleasure, Mrs. Uh... It's Miss Flit, actually. And I make it a rule never to shake hands with individuals who belong to certain organizations. <laughs> Golf is a barbaric practice, Mr. Wallace. Those caught in its snares inevitably descend into squalor. Destitution and madness. It's all there in this little booklet. Save yourself, Wallace! <laughs> Beg pardon, madam, but regarding the uh, charges you've brought against me, I mean to say, is that a fair way to treat a fellow? A bit rough, if you ask me. Fair way? Rough? No! <laughs> you see, Felicity, this is what golf does to the mind. The man is obsessed. <laughs> a glass of milk? Makes a change for the sort of tipple you imbibe at your club, I'll venture. Very good. Drink your milk. At least that's a wholesome activity. Do you think it will restore his senses, our prudence? There's always hope. I've enjoyed our little chat, Miss Flit. Oh, and a great pleasure meeting you, Miss Flit. Uh, but, uh, moustache? Please, try to turn your life around, Wallace. Uh, awfully pressed for time, Gromit. <laughs> Would you mind attending to our guests? Huh? <laughs> Could we have a clean handkerchief, please? How do, Wallace? How goes your first and last day at your new club? Couldn't you see fit to spare prickly thicket, Constable Dibbins? Quite devoted to the place, ain't you? Considering you only got sworn in this morning? It's only that, well, the club has such a long history and a... Uh... Aye, an history of decline and fall, and blatant discrimination when it comes to new members. I beg your pardon? They don't know what they missed out on, passing over a crack golfer like me. I could have put Prickly Thicket back on map. I could have showed them that... It... Showed them what? It wouldn't mean anything to you, Wallace, but plenty of clubs are killed to have a member who knows the... The Ganges Grip. A master of the Ganges Grip, eh? Oh. You've got hidden depths, Constable. That I have. And since how nobody seems to appreciate them, my depths are gonna stay hidden. Uh, afraid I can't quite make out what you're saying. <laughs> A 
miss. It's had some of that Mr. Paneer's fancy nut butter. Now she can't open a gob. Oh, dear. Sticky situation, that. Ha, <laughs> I know. Wonder if he's got any more. <laughs> Here you are, Mrs. Gabberly. This ought to do the trick. Oh, I can talk again. Now look what you've done, Wallace. And I'll have a few choice words for you tonight. I wonder, Mrs. Gabberly, uh, would you mind awfully if I uh, dip the handle of my golf club into your sticky nut butter? If it'll help you with your detective work, help yourself. I want nothing more to do with the stuff. Much obliged. Now then, about the Ganges grip, I was wondering... You're holding the blinking club upside down, give me that! The trick is to... Hey, think you can steal me secrets, do you? All right, take a gander at this. There now, catch that, did you? Uh. <laughs> What trick are you trying to pull, Wallace? Take your pigging club and bug off, Wallace. I haven't got time for all your sh shenanigans. Much obliged, Constable. Crikey O'Reilly, this is most irregular. Oh, <gasps> the Ganges grip. I told you, Paneer, there's no such... <sighs> By heavens, he's crazy. A and key. Talk about a hole in one. Tee hee time, everybody. Time for a joke. I say, I say, I say. I'm wearing my lucky golf socks today. Lucky golf socks? What the devil are lucky golf socks? The pair with a hole in one. A sock with a hole in one! <laughs> Either that clock's wrong or I am. Hmm. Springs could do with a bit of tensioning. Nonsense. Clock's on thicket time, that's all. Now then, I wonder... Heavens! Yes, he's found it's it! It's a silver key! Be careful with that book. It's our greatest treasure. The golfer's path to perfection. Aye, our first chairman spent his whole life devising this system. But now, it's lost to history. All that remains of the path is the sixth and final step.
Automatic golf ball cleaner. to tee off. No! <sighs> oh, who am I gonna humiliate today? Well, this now, is it? Is that the best we can do for a challenger? No. Watch how it's done, laddie. Turn, Wallace, unless you want to throw in the towel. Pick a club. It's your turn, so take a shot. You can swing from the laddie's tee right there, or the lassie's tee down there. For you, I'd recommend the lassie's tee. Your club and tee off. Wouldn't be my club now, would it? How does he do it, you ask? Talent. Sheer talent. Not really cricket to make you keep playing, Wallace, but. If you're set on it, there are the clubs. How many strokes you reckon it'll take him to get off the tee? Show us your best, Wallace. Chairman's missed his shot? No, I never. It were the rubbish club what missed it. Well, your turn. Pick a club. Here comes the fiend of the fairway. Gonna swing from the big boys to you this time, are you, Wallace?
Revance! He did it again! He missed another shot! Um, something's not right! What's going on? Alright then. Which club are you going to use? Stand back, everyone! The pro's going to show us how it's done! Step up to the D, Wallace! Wallace sunk the ball. No, he never. Uh, it's a trick. He... Uh... Crevens. Crikey. Oh. The key. Oh, the key. The key. I'm afraid not. It takes three keys to find the deed, you say? Aye, a golden one, a silver one, and a porcelain one, all hidden somewhere about the club. Hmm, this Goodman Witless, he must have been ahead of his time. Uh, to design such an elaborate security system. And then forget how to turn it off! Blithering nincompoop, if you ask me! Hmm. The porcelain key that will slide in the porcelain slot. Looks like a match. Gold key, gold lock. It appears to be genuine. So you see, PC Plod, Prickly Thicket has a wee golf course after all. I see. And where is this land exactly? Well... Hmm, uh... If you can't even establish that, gentlemen, I don't see how... Gangway! Gangway! Used to be in reconnaissance, don't you know? Damn hand at topography. Let me see now. Bit of a rise to the north, river bisecting the 11th fairway, grove of oaks to the west. Interesting. What, what, is, what it? is it? Naturally, some of the landmarks have disappeared in the intervening years, but if my guess is correct, the 18th green is located precisely on the spot of ground now known as... 62 West Wallaby Street. Well, I'll be. And it's not just my house that's in danger. If Chairman McBiscuit gets his way, the golf course will end up covering most of it. But I'm still jiggered if I understand why you're playing golf through the middle of town. If I win the Chairman's Tournament, I'll be named Chairman of Brickley Thicket, Mrs. Gavily. It's only the club chairman who can call off the wrecking ball. Why is the Chairman's Tournament got to be played here? Well, as the deeds show, Mrs. G, we're standing on the site of the original Brickley Thicket golf course. You see, it's all very logical if you've stopped to think about it. Chairman McBiscuit sinks his foot, moving him to 20 under par. But let's face it, Pat. You haven't a prayer. Oh, I'm not chucking in the trilby just yet. I've still two holes to play, remember? 
And I've got one clear advantage. The greatest helper a golfer ever had. Me remote activated auto caddy. Watch this. Uh, 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 here, Gromit, how do you like to man the controls for a while, eh? Huh? <laughs> Get away with ya! Give up new while you're still behind! Have you not been humiliated enough? Not by half. Uh, which way to the next key? Well, let's make things interesting at least. Two holes left to play. The wee short hole starts here. And it ends oh, right over there. What a shot! All in one for Chairman McBiscuit. He's on fire today, ladies and gentlemen. Now he swaggers to the 18th tee. The long hole starts right here. And it ends. Oh, buy it for the Bobby Dazzler. Clean out of sight. Hey, Penia, where's it going to come down then? Let me see now. The 18th hole. Yes, that would be... Uh, 62 West Wallaby Street. Oh, yeah. Now, you can play the two holes in either order. Play them both at the same time, if you like. First man to finish the pair of them wins the tournament. What do you say? I say... Uh, mm, that's a very sporting offer. I accept. Right then, I'm afraid I haven't got time to hang around here and watch you muff your shorts. I've a victory party to get to. You'd best follow me back to the 18th green, Paneer. You'll not want to miss commentating on my match-winning putt. Hmm. Now then, which hole shall we tackle first? Let's give the short hole a try. Oh dear, that's going to be a tough shot. A spectacular shot, ladies and gentlemen. Spectacularly bad, that is. Straight into the sewer. Another stroke of misfortune for the underdog Wallace. Nothing for it but to take the plunge, eh, lad? Not exactly a picnic in the garden, but at least it's dry down here, eh, Chuck? Uh, now to locate the ball and chip it back out. Shouldn't be too difficult a... Uh, task? Oh, dear.
listeners, it isn't over yet. Not till the ball goes into the cup. Here at the end of the 18th hole. We've got the ball, but there is the cup. That's the burning question this afternoon. And we're back, broadcasting live from the Prickly Thicket Chairman's Tournament here at beautiful 62 West Wallaby Street. If you're just joining us, I'm Mr. Panier, and I'm here with top-seeded player Duncan McBiscuit. We're on the green of the 18th hole. At least, uh, we think this is the green for the 18th hole. To be honest, we're having a right old to do trying to find the actual hole. Are you positive this is the spot? Well, I copied me notes straight from the old deed. Thirteen lengths southwest of the tree, it says. Maybe you're measuring with the wrong club. There's only one official prickly thicket measuring club, and this is it. <laughs> yes, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. The thrilling finale to a thrilling contest. Stay tuned and you won't want to miss a moment of the drama. McBiscuit is the reigning champion. How's Wallace doing? He's at about... He just... Uh, that's a good question. I'd better check on Wallace. Me listeners won't want to miss anything important. Mushrooms? There, there, my dear. Oh, it's only Gromit. <laughs> There he is, and there's no polite way to say this, down in the sewer, flailing about with his clubs in the filth. And they called him the Rookie of the Year. Who would have thought Wallace would end up down there? Yes, sir. It's happened. Just as I said it would. He's finally hit rock bottom. And only I can save him, his angel of mercy. I'm coming, my poor, addle-headed, golfing fool! What a tournament it's been. What a contest. Up and down, up and down. Of course, all the ups has been Duncan and... Oh, there you are, Gromit. Well, no luck down here, I'm afraid. If only these pesky mushrooms hadn't... Wallace! It's fled. So it's true. You finally hit rock bottom. As great Aunt Prudence said you would. It had to happen, I know, but oh, so quickly! No matter, your angel of mercy has come for you. I will lift you from this place of degradation back into the light. I'll wipe your burning brow and nurse you back to health. I'll surround you with flowers and music and mushrooms. Out of here! Get me out of here! Oh, you poor thing, you've had a fright! Everywhere! Everywhere! Mushrooms! Come up to the flat, love. I'll fix you a nice cup of tea. I'm not sure I know what to make of that, lad. Do you? Don't move the ball, Gromit. That's cheating. Golf Wallace. Down there in the sewer. Taking stroke up.
Now, which club to use? Oh, what do you think, lad? Well, it's about time. It's in the cup, ladies and gents. Mario says Sonky's ball. Bringing his score down to just... Did they see... 98 to 215 to 235 over par. But the tournament ain't over yet. You know, Gromit, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this game. I'll take the controls now, lad. It'll take a good strong club to get me all the way to West Wallaby Street. Which one to choose? Ah, me blistering iron. Pity the flag isn't in the post box, eh, Gromit? <laughs> To play the ball from where it lies, I reckon. And here comes Wallace, the keen as mustard challenger, hot on the heels of our champion. The action is becoming fast and furious here at 62 West Wallaby Street. Uh, relatively speaking, that is, for our current ch Any sign of the ball yet, lad? Quick then! Wallace's ball! Oh no! This hallway ain't big enough for the both of us! You didn't see that! And neither did you! See what? He squints, he licks a finger and... Ah! He joke book. Oh, this is a good one. I say, I say, I say. Might surprise you to hear it, but I'm a scratch golfer and all. You? A scratch golfer? That's right. I write down all me good scores and scratch off all the bad ones. And scratch off all the bad ones! <laughs> and here comes Wallace, the
found the ball, lad. Now, uh, which club to use? It'd help if I knew where the hole was. What are you up to, lad? Blinky and Nora, the 18th hole! Something from it. Now, which club to use? Oh, what do you think, lad? Now... Another try? All right. Indeed it is. The long reign of Duncan McBiscuit has come to an end. All, All hail, hail Chairman, Chairman Wallace. Wallace! Oh, uh, uh, no need to make a fuss on my account. Oh, but there is, Wallace. Heard the entire game on the wireless. 
This is a new beginning for Prickly Thicket. Aye, an era of peace and goodwill and justice for all. Right, Wallace? Uh, well, uh, that is, uh, yes, uh, I certainly hope so. As Gromit will attest, I've always been very Gromit. No dogs allowed in the club, lad. You'll have to wait outside. Now, for my first official act as chairman... Three trumpets for all? Uh, no, Major Crump. My first official act will be to tear up old Roaring McBiscuit's deed and to save West Wallaby Street from the bulldozer. Ah, of course. Jolly good. Jolly good. You carry on, Wallace. Where is he? Where is that wee bogan bump watch? Uh, you mean Chairman Wallace. He's around the corner, tearing up the deed. He cannot do that! Oh, but he can. Tournament's over, and he won it fair and square. But you're forgetting about the sudden death round. Sudden death? Aye, the round where I make sure he meets a sudden death. Don't touch him! 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 Or you come in a garden, Grey Squirrel. And as the offence took place on prickly thicket property, I've no choice but to lock it up, knock it down, and bury the remains. And we're here to see you do your duty. That's right. Prickly thicket has caused quite enough trouble. Kindly point me to the chair. Well, it is too late to save myself. Who's been looking about with me oscillating fan? It don't oscillate no more. Suppose I'd better join them. Miss anything important, have I? Well, uh, I haven't actually done anything yet. As you can see, we're packed like a pressure cooker full of sardines. And I wanted to discuss our options before... Discuss? Poppycock, are you a waffler or a leader, Wallace? Well, uh, uh, that is, I, uh, 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 uh. Wafflers waffle! Leaders eat! It's a trap! Everything's under control. I'm sure there's a simple way to deactivate the lock. It's a sand trap. Uh, uh, no need to panic. Uh, uh, I have an idea. Uh, uh, but to put it into effect, I'll need to shift over to the window. Miss Flit. Would you mind moving over a bit? Where would I go? Uh, Major Crumb, could you slide into the empty space? Flanking maneuver, eh? Brilliant strategy! Mr. Paneer, if uh, you wouldn't mind sliding over... Like this? You realise, Mr. Paneer, we could have avoided this outcome if you'd have chose a different candidate for membership. You're in the club now, ain't you? Satisfied? Pardon me, Mr. McBiscuit. Could you perhaps shift your weight over a bit? I'd like to shift my fist onto your hooter for getting us into this scrape. Dunk, please. All right, lassie, all right. Uh, hello, Felicity. Duncan? Why'd you do it, Felicity? Why'd you want to throw me over for an umpty like Wallace? I'm not interested in Wallace anymore. I'm not interested in any man who... golfs. Aye, but I'd have given it up. 
for you, lassie. You would? Aye, from the moment you first brushed me off, I can't you were the one for me. I tried to put my feelings into rhyme, but oh, I'm no good with words. Your eyes are as deep as the murkiest lock. Your teeth are as straight as Blackpool Rock. You remember it? Of course I did. Your eyes aren't too shabby either. Major Crumb? One step ahead of you, Wallace. <clears throat> now, Mr. Penier, if you move over, I know. Constable Dibbins, if you can move over. I'll give the orders here, if you don't mind. And I'm ordering myself to move over. Could you shift over a bit, Mrs. Gabberly? Oh, I'll have a go. Uh, now, Miss Flit, if you could simply shift your weight, uh, <laughs> uh, into the empty space. This is intolerable. Miss Flit, uh, I wonder if you could just wiggle over. Big pardon? Uh, into the empty space. Oh. Mr. McBiscuit? Ah, oh, shit, you're giggy, I'm shifting. Mrs. Gabberly? Say no more, Pat. Constable Dibbins? Perhaps I will, perhaps I won't. Miss Flit, could you, uh... Oh. That's it! Move into striking range! Uh. Miss Flit? What an impertinence! Come a little closer. I want to give you a hug. Uh... to bring it up at a time like this, Mr. Paneer, but there is an outstanding balance on that pudding magazine. I can't reach my wallet at the moment, Mrs. Gabberly. Of course you can't, love. We can settle up later. Ah, and here we are. Oh, much obliged, everyone. Now I can put my plan into effect.
What's taking you so long, lad? Thanks, lad. Close friends are a fine thing, but that was a bit too close. Well, why people are so keen on country clubs is a mystery to me. Then you meant what you said in there about quitting Prickly Thicket? For you, a little sprig of healing. Uh, just a second, Felicity. Oh, I don't oh, think duck. I've been introduced You're to this so young man. Romantic. Sand bath, most invigorating. Cleans out the pores. Reminds me of the good old days in the Sahara. You know, Constable Dibbins, I hear on Grapevine there may be another, uh, opening at Prickly Thicket. And I've heard a certain grocery shop may be reopening soon, too. <laughs> well, old chum, I'd say Golden Retrieval's first professional investigation has gone rather... <coughs> Wallace, this is rather awkward for me to say. I, I, I mean, I know your feelings about me. Oh, uh, you do? You see, in the heat of adversity, I've discovered that my heart belongs to another. Oh, uh, right -o. So, please, don't say anything to prolong our agony. I must therefore return this to you. My heck, lad, that's two close shaves in one afternoon. I don't know about you, but I could murder a copper. Oops, hang on just a sec. Time for some cheese, methinks, Gromit. What do you fancy, lad? Eat am or Wensleydale. 